What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the KSCM. We're getting started with Best versus Royal in this week, week number four of season two of 2024. Let's get it started. Here we go. The lineup for you at the bottom of the screen. JYJ, Barracks, Royal, Snow, Best, YSC, Queen, Jadon, Hero. Sick, sick lineup for this week. Yeah, it's looking pretty impressive, Sam. I'm happy about it. Nice to see uh, Barracks getting some limelight. He's got a very impressive turn versus uh, Greco. A little bit struggling in the turn versus Protoss, but there's no mini this time. We got YC instead, but still Snow and Best. And Best hasn't been around for a few weeks. Maybe Protoss getting a bit, bit more serious again and bringing out their big grand ape to you know shut these kids down. Yeah, they've been on a bit of a lost streak, so Best needs to come back out and show them how it's done. Yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Uh, on the the barracks pick here and it's even uh more impressive than you might think barracks has a 70 percent win rate versus zerg in pro league right now and that's where uh, everyone brings out their a game right this is of course a very important tournament there's a lot of money on the line here but it's nothing compared to pro league pro league has so much cash flying back and forth every single week and they take it very very seriously so 70 percent win rate absolutely insane in that format yeah it's kind of uh, unheard of usually you don't see that kind of impressive record and the only players you do see with those kinds of records are usually people of like flashes caliber uh, when you get into those crazy numbers so it's very impressive to see in any matchup those kind of numbers especially at those highest echelons of play a little bit of a pro harassment from Best, uh, but no crazy aggressive play from him. It looks like he's even considering the option here of uh, just going straight into an early Nexus and just putting on a little bit of pressure. What are you coming with the gas? Yeah, big, yeah the gas is going to come here, but everything looking pretty normal so far. Speaking of Flash, though, a lot of you guys are uh, probably tuning in from uh, for the KCM for the first time. There's uh, been quite an upswell of support and viewership on the replay cast because of Flash coming back, and I'm sure there's a few of you who have never seen the KCM before and just thought you might check it out after seeing some of my other casts, so welcome you guys. Hope we're going to see Flash in this uh, awesome, awesome tournament sometime soon, but uh, it remains to be seen. He's still on the come up. He's still making his way back. These are the best right. players in the world right now, though. These are the guys who have bashed Flash on the ladder most recently. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll be some time until Flash is anywhere near his previous dominant self, even if he ever does get back to that level of play. So he'll be in training for, I imagine, for anywhere from 3 to 12 months before we start to see any major results out of him yet again. But instead, we've got some really talented players here. I'm loving Best being back on the stage, and uh, I think Royal is a necessary addition to this group because JYJ and Barracks both struggle a little bit against Protoss players. Yeah, absolutely. Royal so powerful in this matchup. It's glad to see him coming out here first against Best, but I mean, this is going to be a really close shave if he manages to take down Best here. Already taking a lot of damage on these first couple of Marines. Pretty good micro here, but he's he is going to lose one. He does lose that one, and uh, kind of an interesting little Sim City in the back corner there for Be for Royal, but Best is navigating it perfectly, and he's going to get even another kill. Oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah, even the chase micro with that particle beam on the probe, but aiding and killing that Marine before he can run to the safety. He does get the Zealot trap, so we'll be picking up the kill on that, but not without sustaining some damage. And now a second Zealot coming in here to slow down the timing of this command. So with the Vulture popping out, I don't think this is going to be too fruitful. Yeah, he's going to have to just run away, sacrifice the probe, and hopefully get away with the Zealot. Maybe can bully the, the Vulture on the ramp here a little bit to buy some time and not just get traded off for free by being chased down. So getting some value here while waiting for the Stragoon to come on. Yeah, this is some good fancy footwork here from Bass. Just staying on top of this ramp and uh, fighting back the Vulture. He is getting a little damage on that, and he's kept his Zealot at a pretty high HP. Long enough to get the Dragoon over here, in fact. So, Dragoon gonna try to push away the Marines, maybe get a kill on one of those. Not gonna happen. 
will just return uh, back towards his home because there could be a vulture heading out on the map here pretty soon. Gotta be safe. Yeah, yeah there's gonna be a DT follow-up from Bess, so really cheesy, just straight into it. And he did confirm the, the command center with that Dragoon, which was the main purpose of sending that Dragoon right up on in there. So he does know exactly what Royal's gone for here, so he's confident that he can get some damage done with his DTs, and does obviously give him the option to go into like Arbiter play or you know, um, straight into a third base as well, going for this. And it looks like it might even be drop Dark Templar play, so this could be very aggressive stuff that might just like tip the scale in this favor right away, or it could also fall fat on his face. We do see a relatively quick eBay from Royal here. Five minute eBay is uh, quick enough to deter this as long as he puts enough turrets down in the right positions. This is a little bit out of character for Bass, so that's. That could be the reason why it ends up working here. Uh, or, right. you know, if Royal is just on top of everything, it could get completely shut down. I'm leaning towards the shutdown right now because these vultures are going to run right by, get a bunch of kills, and force, you know, best to pull everything to the front here. He's going to see that there's only two dragoons thus far. And I think he might have been able to get vision there just for a moment on top of the high ground. I'm not sure about that, but if he did, he might actually be tricked by the fact that there's a robo here because yep. this could signal to him that there's going to be some sort of uh, reaver play. But in fact, those DTs are just about uh, to pop out and we will have that DT drop beginning here in just a moment. Oh, going after the zealot here. The zealot's going to take a lot of damage and this is going to run right up inside. He's going to see everything. Oh, oh wow, this is huge, huge scout. Yeah, he doesn't even kill anything with this vulture. Just seeing these D this DT timing is everything now. He's going to be able to uh, mitigate any potential disastrous damage that would have usually caught him with his pants down. Now he's going to be more or less stabilized against this threat. I, I, I doubt that Bess is going to get a lot done with this now. Now that Royal's going to be able to set up for this and keep vultures uh, chilling in the main base to catch these DTs as they pop out and what have you, it's going to be much harder for best to find any damage done with this already a couple of mines laid in the main base just as a precaution and he's also going to keep putting on pressure at the front to see if he can find any additional uh slowdown on this third base timing and maybe even getting another uh, some pro harassment done again yeah he might be able to get in here he's gonna force the mine on top of this dragoon and with only one dragoon there he's not gonna be able to do too much mine here gonna connect might kill a few scvs one scv goes down but the vulture can just continue to kite this it will find a little spot in the back but i think a uh, academy is done running inside the natural again here we didn't see wow. exactly what transpired with that dragoon but i imagine it got hit by a mine and finished off and the rallies here coming across the map are going to be able uh, to continue to put on this pressure killing off more and more probes this is brutal damage and after yeah. this did nothing the, dr the dark templar drop did nothing i think we're going to see best tap out here pretty soon yeah, I think he may have to. I mean, he's trying with all his might to c catch these vultures with these probes and try and like usher them into a corner to be killed off by their particle beams. Has caught one of them, but not really a lot of compensation in Royal's base inversely. Only a couple of uh, fly depots going down, and Royal's been able to replace those as well. So finally cleaning up these vultures is best, but a huge cost. Royal's currently ahead by quite a significant amount of workers right now, and is probably like able to do kind of whatever he wants. He can either go straight into like a big timing attack from here or just expand and play a bit more passively and yeah this is definitely a big edge to royal going forward i think as soon as he sees his third base he's gonna opt for the yeah. timing attack option i think so um the dragoon range was super late here uh, we can see even as he was cleaning up those last few vultures the dragoon range was still not done he's struggling really really hard to deal with the vultures that are just running around the map and laying down mines everywhere and looking for opportunities to dive in and kill more probes and how can best put together an army that can stop a push across this little uh choked area here the what was it called the catwalk that comes through it's so powerful for a terran push uh, on two bases he is going to go into a third base but i imagine it's still going to be like a six factory push after that let's just let's just see what best can do with this little dragoon army though there's only one tank at the third maybe that can be killed uh, 
here before Royal gets full defenses over to that position. Well, it seems like Royal is like relegated to playing very mid range. He's gone. He went into four factories, then took his third. So we, we may see a few more additional factories made before he makes a fourth command center as well. Oh, and he's going to get another run. No. This is absolutely insane damage he's going to find on these pros. Huge mistake from Bess. Really uncharacteristic as well. He's cutting way too many corners trying to catch up in this game, and he's just getting caught with his pants down yet again. Like this guy needs to invest in a belt or something. So <laughs> his pants. Yeah. His fans have uh, fallen to the ground here. Royal giving him a little poke over and over again. This is uh, like not the typical best that we imagine seeing, right? At the beginning of this cast, we were talking yeah. about how he was being brought out here to maybe put some wind back in the sails for the Protoss, but here just getting slapped around by Royal. The uh, Terran versus Protoss specialist, specialist in this lineup, but not at all the the game result that we were expecting to see even with royal being you know uh, well versed in this matchup best is a serious contender and oh i thought he was gonna slip by there one more time but finally getting that belt tied up tight best is not gonna let any more pokes come through yeah maybe he's got one of those like just like you know massive ropes that he's trying to use as a, as a belt and he just like, needs to like find it in a tight enough knot to like kind of get his shorts to stay up i don't know what's going on with this situation but nonetheless like it's looking pretty dire for best i mean it's 83 supplied to 77. there's no way best is going to be able to crack open this position like he usually does and i think that's going to be the, the thing that tips this game into royals royals hands even more is that best doesn't have this this win condition of just bowling over this this defensive position at the third base so he's just gonna have to expand and play passively and i think that's gonna really suit royal and royals are an absolute powerhouse in this matchup so i think eventually he's gonna get more and more damage done and squeeze best out of this game it's gonna be a really rough one for best here well let's give best the benefit of the doubt he did go for dt play early on which means his yeah. templar tech is very fast he should have templar coming out and that's the comeback mechanic that maybe he needs to stabilize in this game if he gets some really amazing storms on big groups of tanks as royals for instance shoving across that catwalk in a very tight formation maybe that's the comeback mechanic that can bring best into a winning position here it's just not looking good as you were saying we've got about the same number of gateways here as there are factories which is never a good sign and we don't have reaver or anything like that it's just pure gateway man with a few shuttles some zealots and hopefully some templar coming out to help save the day yeah and royal's not taking any risks he's went up to seven factories before considering taking this uh fourth base as well i believe he's building his fourth base just outside his natural right now and he's float he'll float that over in a, a minute here but yeah, I mean, Royal's like really tentative and just pushing along this catwalk. Uh, it's looking pretty scary. There is a high oh, temple that's currently being targeted down as Vulture just does bite the dust as well. This is really rough for best. He needs those Sionic Storms to have any chance at fighting us back. He's just going to evacuate the expansion. This is looking pretty dire for him here, so. Yeah, he's got another base in the bottom left-hand corner where he can transfer his probes to. He's actually sending them to the natural now, but I hope he gets them down over to that bottom left as soon as possible. He needs this three-base economy to f have any chance at all, any hope of fighting Royal on three base right now. Yeah, it's looking, it's looking pretty bad. There's so many vultures being rallied down as well. There's no, like, tech switch as well. And more and more vultures are sniping these high templars at the rally point as well before the, the main engagement can even transpire. It's going to be so hard for Best to counter this massive mech army that Royal's been able to field. It does get on top of his scans to find those dark templars that are trying to slice away at the tanks with their warp blades as well. It's a really frustrating situation for Best to be in. He's going to try and go for it now and get his uh, zealots up top, top of these tanks, but there's still enough uh, vultures on the high ground to, to start to soak up some of this damage maybe if he can just reduce this tank count just a little bit here there'd be some life in it for best but unfortunately he's losing far too many of his progress infantry at the cost of just a few of royal's tanks yeah not too much is going down here for royal and he's pushing forward i really love the game plan from royal uh, the the decision making here at the end of the game uh, the way that he was just diving in with his vultures and sacking a lot of them to get the templar kills he knew exactly what we were thinking that templar were the only way the only hope for best to come back in this game and getting rid of them taking them out of the equation 
absolute fantastic decision from him and now he's pushing in all the way to the natural there's hardly any hope less left for best he's got a couple of templars left over here doesn't have anything on the high ground the fourth base in the top left hand corner is getting set up i don't know what it is that royal built out in front of his natural i guess it's not a command center but there is something out there yeah, I mean, Royal has, like, just completely dismantled Bess in this game. First, he, like, disabled his, his muscles, and now he's pulled out his fangs. His un and Bess is unable to fight back, so very quick win on the board here for Terran. And this is exactly what Terran squad need, because Royal is, like, really their, like, only powerhouse against Protoss. So now they've got Barracks and JYJ still waiting in the wings to help deal with this uh, Zerg squad on top of that. Can't forget about Snow, though. He's still in the background. Mm. Bit of hope left for that Protoss squad, yet with Best going down, it's got to be feeling dire. We're going to jump into our next game. Terran versus Zerg. Who's going to be sent out next? We're about to find out. Hero going to be sent out here versus Royal for game number two. Radeon is your map. Hero in the top right, Royal in the bottom left. Cross map positions. This should be a fun match. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Hero is such a beast, and Royal is definitely, um, what's the word for it, saying like a, a worthy contender, if you will. Yeah, more than a match, I would say, for Hero. Let's see what he can pull out. I mean, cross map, Radeon, there's so many bases to take. There's so much that can go on here. Yeah. Where are you taking your third bases, Zerg, on this, this I mean, position I think as you, hero? I think you have to take um, top left natural in this situation as your third, and then play four base Zerg that way. I think that's the, the way forward here. He may even decide to play a bit more greedy with how many mutas he makes. He may do like a 2.5 hatch build and then, you know, not make too many mutas initially, especially with the, the long rush distances. He may, you know, relegate to squeezing out a few more drones in the early to mid game stages than usual definitely a possibility he is known uh in kcm for being that guy who builds very few mutas he just loves to tech up quickly get into his late game i've watched him recently uh, bring games back from positions that you would find absolutely abysmal like you would want to leave that game mm. um and he somehow finds a way to bring it back once he gets those defilers out because he is just so strong uh, with that style. And he's going to be scouting down here to the bottom right after grabbing his 12 hatchery, checking to see where Roy is. And I think once he finds Roy in the bottom left, he's going to be pretty happy with his spot. Yeah, I think so. I think... Um... This also prevents the Terran from getting away of any like early game shenanigans of like some naked marines walking across the map and sniping a couple of drones when you've only got two zerglings out and what have you. So yeah, this does negate a lot of the shenanigans that can come Hero's way and keeps the game as simplified as possible. And he does confirm the command center with his drone scout as well. So he knows that all the timings, he knows it's one Rex FE and what have you based on what timing the command center was started. So. Yeah, Hero's going to be feeling pretty chill about this. But we are going to see the Naked Marine out, despite the fact that it's cross-map. So, Royal's trying to, like, um, double bluff Hero maybe here a little bit and say, like, you you, you know I probably won't go for this because it's cross-map. I'm going to go for it anyway because you don't expect it. Maybe catch this Overlord, who knows? Could catch the Overlord. Could just walk straight up into the... He's going for the Overlord. Yeah. Look at that. He's going to get it, I think. Maybe. This is going to be huge. I think he might just get it, yeah. And he's got the SCV um, that's being chased by the Lings, so the Lings aren't, aren't quite on a good enough attack vector to save this Overlord by a tiny bit of time either. So it might just barely go down here, and that's a great win for Royal. Hero's going to try and find a little bit of compensation by running past with these two Zerglings, seeing if he can get some damage, like two and one action in the natural expansion. But there'll be two Marines waiting for those Zerglings, so he won't find any relief there either. Even being forced to make a few additional links back at home to make sure these naked marines can continue on to the natural expansion. Yeah, these links are going to get the marine though, actually. So good target firing from Hero to get some compensation here. Does get a little bit of scouting for this link's time, but not really anything beyond that. Yeah, this is a bit rough for Hero. You never love like to lose that initial Overlord. It's not as bad as losing the first Overlord, but it's still quite painful. He's going to get... More overlords going here in a moment. He might have had to, you know, do a couple of uh, extractor tricks or, you know, other building tricks to try and get a few more drones out. But he's stabilizing his economy now and getting ready for 
uh, the transition here into the mutilus play. A bunch of uh, Marines are just walking across the map while these Lings run by. I'm a little bit surprised wow. to see him run four Mar Lings just straight on by and try to get up into the main base while these like five, six Marines just head straight across the map. They are naked, so with no medic support, Sunken Colony will yeah. be enough to handle this, but that was kind of a wild play by Hero. What did you think about that attack? Well, I kind of like it at this, at, on one hand, though, because there, if Royal is, like, slacking even a tiny bit on his macro cycles, there's a chance that those four lings are there when there's only two marines and they completely dominate, and then they, they're on top of the production of the Terran when medics want to start being produced. So it does really frustrate the Terran at that particular timing. So on the one hand, I really like it. And I also feel like it does help him indirectly defend because it does keep the marines pulling back in the middle of the map, and it made him get away by only making a single sunken here for the time being so in a way it's a small win for hero does have this hatchery on the way in the top left but overall it is a pretty sizable advantage for royal still i feel like if royal i mean he's gonna scout this in the top left if he just goes with the two racks play uh straight across the map and tries to kill this base in the top left is there anything that royal or that hero can do to stop it yeah he i only can... see one meta on the field well, this is the thing is like he, he could make lings to swallow up these marines if he knows that these marines are being committed out onto the map and he is going to spot these marines with this one muter so if he needed to he could make a few lings as well but i don't think he's going to be forced into doing that he's just going to slowly add on muters gradually getting up to five now and he'll you know go from there but i don't think royal's going to have a timing to exploit here Really feels like the Mutilus count at this point, not high enough to slow down Royal, but he's being really cautious. Like, you can't one-shot a Marine with just three Mutas. So uh, the ability for a hero to actually engage this is bare minimum. It's it's almost nothing. Now he's got enough to one-shot Marines, so Royal's got to be careful, but I feel like he didn't make enough progress moving across the map uh, before this critical mass of Mutas comes out. Yeah. And... Hero's gotten away with a lot here, don't you think? I mean, we've already got the third gas. Uh, guys are on the way. We haven't made that many mutas, and I think we can transition here or try to swallow this up with Marine Medic. I I'm not sure what the plan is, but it's starting to look like a, a swallow here from Hero. He wants to just crush this group out on the map. Yeah, there's only two medics here as well, and it's already whittled down enough that he can very soon clean this up, and I imagine he will be doing that in a few moments here. I don't think there's any chance of Royal saving this, but he's getting a bit of damage on these mutas. does manage to snipe one of the mutas there. There's another one that's dangerously low. A few extra additional mutas making that stack up to about 10, so he now will want to start to clean up that bio force, but did take some damage for it. Yeah, his bio force hasn't been reinforced just yet. Uh, he'll be looking to do that soon, but he's been continuously pushed down towards the bottom right. And, oh, wow, we uh, lost vision of the minimap for a second, but it's back now and everything is dead. So he did end up swallowing that uh, force up. It was bound to happen eventually. Now he's got a Valkyrie to try and fight, but uh, I don't think that Hero has Hydralis Den yet, do you? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, I can't. Actually, no, I think he does. Yeah, he does have one building, but I don't think it's finished. Or if it is finished, he hasn't got the uh, technology yet. Definitely research. So he's technically be relying on a lot of damage in the main base with these mirrors to keep the Terran force pulling back. But Royal's not taking that bait. He's got a few uh, Marines moving out to the top left and relying on these Valkyries to clean up on aisle 5 instead. But I think there's enough mutas here. They could just pounce on these Valkyries and get them killed before the repair comes in from the, the SEV. So Royal right now kind of sacrificing a lot of his economy to try and get some damage on the top left. And Hero's going to evacuate the drones before the Marines arrive. So maybe saving some of these precious drones despite losing this hatchery in the top left to find some compensation while denying mining in the main base of royal here this could be just what hero needs to create enough chaos to to come back in this game because it's actually he can get on top of these the units that pop out of the starport at the moment this seems like an unnecessary gamble to me from hero but it's working out well enough uh had those valkyries been repaired uh, quickly enough i think he might have lost everything but since the dive into the main went well and he's killed enough scvs even losing this third base, I, I feel like he's still in a reasonable position as long as he keeps putting on the pressure here in the main base and not allowing uh, Royal to stabilize. He's kind of stuck on one base yeah. uh, with very low tech. He doesn't have vessels on the way. He's just making uh, some Valkyries, whereas Hero's going to be pumping out 
a bunch of lurkers here really soon and he might even have his hive on the way well a royal is winning on paper it's just going to be hard for him to stabilize his economy in his main base uh there is not a lot of hp on this muta stack actually so with some poor micro uh, hero will die very quickly as well and royal is known for how good he is with his valkyrie control so hopefully he can find some more value out of these units and stabilize here he needs to also repair this starport that's slowly burning now you might not notice that the health bar is actually being covered by the building below it. So if he just clicks on it without looking no. at the bottom right, he might not notice that. That could be a big deal here. It's already down to just 340 HP. Hero looking to take the top left. As a Zerg player, I'm feeling, I would be feeling quite bad about this situation. Right. But there's still a lot actually that Hero can do. When we're looking at the supply, still very, very close. Royal has a an incredibly uh, specialized army for fighting the the Mutalis right now, but if the Scourge connect, that speciality just disappears instantly, and the Mutalis can clear everything else up. The Scourge are here to try and make that a reality. Three value fast, and two of them immediately get sniped. Wow. I mean, yeah, he's doing a good job um, of ke keeping himself in this game despite losing this hatchery in the top left. Um, and to be fair, like, he's had to commit into Valkyries and not Vessels, so this is going pretty uh, um, hero's way in that regard. Doesn't able to get the snipe on this Valkyrie, though. He's taking so much damage. He finally kills that Valkyrie and does have a large enough threat remaining. The only problem is, is that these mutas are dangerously low on HP, so he has to be careful about filtering out his low HP mutas here, keeping the stack as healthy as possible while he stabilizes. He has got his Defile Amount online right now, and everything is uh, churning out. He has got his Hive Tech completely online. He just needs to get his third gas um, operational again, and he's going to be sitting a lot more pretty. And with the fact that he's been reliant on Valkyries so long, there's not going to be a huge vessel fleet, and only one starport as well. So honestly, this game might go pretty hero-sided if, if um, Royal can't find anything done with this mid-game army right now. Well, this Lurker landmine could be massive. Yeah. I was wondering about where the Lurkers were going to be for Hero. He has enough uh, sunken colonies in the, the natural. So he doesn't have to, you know, keep the, the Lurkers back. Uh, as a defensive play, I thought he might try to run into the natural and com combo them with the Lurkers to try and get more damage. But instead, he's left them out in the front here. And... Royal's actually gone completely around this, which could be yeah. massive. Oh, 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 the mine! Oh, oh my oh, god, wow. the mine there is so sick. Oh, three that of those That was lurkers. insanely good play. The Royal could win just right off of that. Yes. That is so tight. That is amazing, amazing good play. He's also Royal. laid down some mines in the wake of those lurkers, so they do unburrow and try and get up here now. They're just going to die for free. This is a great timing from Royal. He's going to get on top of this Nidus canal and get the snipe on that before anything can make its way over. This hatchery is getting shut down just before it was going to get up and be totally fine. Huge play from Royal. It's exactly how you want to play Terran versus Zerg. Finding these razor-thin windows to exploit the Zerg's timings, and he's just barely done it. Unfortunately for Hero, kind of like relying on this gambit with the Lurkers a little bit too heavily here, and it's going to come back to haunt him. As he's going to struggle to get a third base up online and operational. He's got a few macro hatcheries in his main base, but no third base in sight. Yeah, no third base, no third gas. The Mutas are still looking around the map for opportunities to get some kills, but are you kidding me? He's oh, going to walk wow. into this? No oh way. my god, wait. What? Oh, Shun, wow. hold me. What the <laughs> hell is going on in this game? It's a huge lapse of judgment there. I think he, may, he maybe just assumed that they, they were evacuated after being found by the Vultures, but no. Now going to be getting the pickup on those tank kills with the Mutas as well, which is huge. Still some Scourge left on live. Going to be catching one or two of those Valkyries as well, softening those up. Still doesn't have this third base going online, but there's a little bit of compensation for Hero to at least make the game state somewhat playable. He's not technically dead and out of this game just yet, but it's still going to be a bit of a mountain for him to climb. Absolutely. He is struggling right now, but he's got money enough to build this third base. He has all the tech that he needs. No armor upgrades uh, for Hero just yet. It's very scrappy right now what Royal is doing, putting out a lot of vultures to throw down mines and hope for some good connections on lurkers and lings trying to run around the map also defilers can trigger those mines so they can get sniped uh which is like one of the best trades you could ever possibly yeah. imagine 
but uh, I mean, as long as Hero is really careful here and he gets the hatchery in the top left with the Nidus, I think he should be able to stabilize. Royal, however, I mean, he's just going to have all the time in the world to do whatever he wants while Hero tries to get his economy back online. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit frustrating for Hero, but if he can get these expansions online and stabilized, he is still going to be pretty comfortable with the game so he's gonna lose some of these valkyries this is just what hero needs to keep these mutas relevant in the game so they can run around and just like kill all the mines that are out on the map and stop the vultures just killing bases for free but now we see this bioforce moving its way into the top left there's nothing to shut this down so at the very least i think that royal is gonna deny this base going up but hero did double expand so he will have his natural third to compensate for losing this base in the top left at the very least this time well, I think that Hero could have actually taken a better trade against those Marines as they were coming up the ramp, but he instead is heading straight across to try and deal some damage. Maybe to the third base is coming up for Royal. He's sending a lot of Lurkers and Lings uh, straight through a lot of mines, and luckily he doesn't lose the majority of that, uh, the majority of those forces. He will get like almost everything into this base, which is fantastic, and he might even be able to shut down the base. Uh, if he targets with the mutas here onto the the cc yeah. which is a real pain in the side for royal but there's no defiler here to be a real threat into the natural well, the i think royal will have to find a way out of this position yeah the vultures snipe the defiler out in the middle of the map while the lurkers wow. are running into position so unfortunately knows of defiler support here it was trying to make its way over there but royal's been so active out on the map with these vultures he's getting a lot of value for them and the mines are doing a lot of work and as well as them being able to snipe these defilers here and there Finally, we have this base finished at the third base location for Hero, but at what cost? I mean, we, we see the six o'clock coming up for Royal as well, so he's got some compensation in his economy as well. He's still able to grow while keeping this pressure on and still being super annoying in the hero side here. Finally, we've got some mutilists coming over to clean this up, but he's not even able to get his third gas online yet, Sam. Finally going to get a third gas online at 17 minutes. Hero should be out of this game with that statement alone right. but with all of the chaos that's gone on with all of the mistakes that have been made on either side you know the walking the army into that insane uh you know already revealed lurker uh, landmine i mean how the heck did that happen <laughs> but that's actually given some life back into this game for hero and He's managed to do a lot with that small mistake. Royal is actually not that strong in this position. He's got a few medics, and so Hero will back away. But there's a lot of different areas that could be poked by Hero right now. I mean, the, the tanks out in the front of the natural are completely bare. There's nothing defending them. The Valkyries that... earlier take from royal now hero can dive in here on this third base yeah there is enough to take out this force that's what i thought yeah. and finally we're gonna go ahead and see that transpire oh the radiate is nasty though doing so much damage to these mutas a tech switch into goliath and tank yeah we're gonna have a mech switch here from royal that's kind of crazy to think yeah we first started with the mines to open up the map and now we got a full-on mech switch gonna be sh getting this the deny on this base at 12 o'clock just barely i think as well there is some units en route to deny this but it's not gonna be enough in time but they're not targeting down the hatchery actually if he'd right clicked on that hatchery it would have definitely died now it will die anyway though the lings uh, weren't gonna be enough to uh, stop those vultures as long as they got attacked by them instead so unfortunately not even gonna get the save on that base is hero does still have this three gases to compensate as something a bit of life in the the blood of this Zerg player here but it's still looking pretty dire for him i mean royal's been able to grow somewhat undeterred he will be mined out in a moment here which is the one thing that's got um, what hero's got going for him it'll be one base terran for a small window of time and he'll have three bases of economy still to work with for a few minutes so there will be a moment of weakness here for royal uh, but i don't think that hero is going to be able to exploit it too easily with this mech switch royal's gonna have to come down to the bottom right hand corner and secure that base he's getting set up already with mines in the the attack path for hero making sure that he can get some trades and soften up the units that are coming in that direction however oh i think a big mine connection Ooh. hitting a lot of links over on this side yeah that's great for royal um tanks getting into position we've got goliaths as well i agree i don't think that he can actually break through this position 
The Defiler just going to run up here and probably die for free. Oh, he gets a nice plague. Not bad at all. But Hero cannot break this base. And we're going to go to four bases now for Royal. Big explosion of bases on the map for Hero is likely to come next. Yeah. I mean, this would be one thing for Hero if this was against Bo. But now that it's a mech transition, it changes the math a lot. And now it's even better for Royal on paper for him to maintain the game state. And uh, the Zerg needs to be way ahead of the Terran to be able to fight against this. Uh, beautiful block from the, the, high, the high ground with the Lurker, though. I like that. <laughs> it's the kind of thing you have to do to not be completely abused by uh, the Terran mech units. Uh, nice play from Hero there, understanding that he can't really afford to keep diverting his attention to, to dealing with these run buys all game long. He needs to stabilize somehow, and just blocking the ramp might be one way of doing that. That was funny. Sneaky play from Hero to just unburl the Lurker. You never really think about it, because Lurker is... Ostensibly, it's supposedly useless uh, when it's <laughs> unburled, but... I guess it can be used for, for one reason, or for for one purpose anyway. Uh, yeah. which is just blocking that ramp and making good use out of units that uh, most players don't think of. That's a sign of a great player. Now he's got Lurkers, and he should have a Defiler in just a couple of seconds. Does he have it in time, though? This is the moment where Royal could break this game wide open and win right now, but the Defiler pops out. The Lurkers are going to be here, and I think Royal will hold on. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice D-Majors on his tank, but it's not going to be enough. With the, the Dark Swarms will last about a minute here before finally another Assault can be launched, and more Defilers will be waiting on the outside to come through the Nidus at the right time to make sure this attack cannot continue. And yeah, this is just what Hero needs to, to have any chance of staying alive in this game, but it's going to be rough going from here on because Royal's going to be able to continually expand, take the whole bottom half of the map here, and fighting against a, a five base Terran like this, uh, especially a mech Terran, is going to be a rough going. He's going to do what he can, snipe a few of these vessels, push out, get some space to both uh, push the Terran back and also create room for him to grow here because he needs as many expansions as he can muster to be able to fight against this Terran mech army that's also going to be racing ahead in upgrades uh, as the Zerg is currently doing reasonably well on upgrades, but against a fully upgraded mech army, it's very Terran sided. Getting a few nice kills on some of these vultures, but I definitely agree. It's going to be hard to fight uh, against this highly upgraded mech force as it grows larger and larger as the tank count continues to grow. It's going to get more and more difficult here for Hero. He needs like four, five, six bases online. Right. And he's only got three right now with the fourth just barely starting to come online. It's not enough. Yeah. He needs more to deal with Royal, who's now on five bases himself, uh, adding those SCVs down to the bottom right-hand corner. It's just so much to deal with right now for Hero. He could crack apart at any moment. Yeah, he's doing a great job of setting up these siege tanks to snipe this gas at a distance over this bridge. So even though he's not oh. able to break this expansion, he's still denying the gas being mined there. And that 300 gas a minute being shut down is critical to Hero right now. He needs gas only at this point. Like, Lings alone are not going to cut it. And he's going to try and make one big attempt at breaking out here, seeing if he can put down the Dark Swarm, snipe these vessels, and get these Lurkers borrowed on top of this army to at least force them to run away so he can at least remake this gas and keep a periphery of defenders to prevent this gas being sniped again, because that gas is absolutely critical to him. He's getting another base online in the top left, and but inversely, Royal's going to continue to grow as well. He's going to take both of these pocket expansions in the bottom left and bottom right as well. So he's going to have so much gas and minerals to, um, at his disposal as well. He's coming into the top left with some Vulture run buys and drops to do a bit of pressure here to Hero as well. And so I would say Royal's growing like exponentially, whereas like Hero's struggling to survive and grow himself. So this is getting a little bit worse for Hero as time goes on. Drop coming down into the bottom right-hand corner now. A bunch of Lings just got loaded up. I agree with you. Lings are not that great when it comes to just fighting against the uh, Pro or the Terran mech. But uh, Lings being dropped into a main like this is fantastic. They're going to do so much damage. Dark Swarm, come on. Oh, that's unfortunate. Doesn't get the Dark Swarm or a Plague on these units. But he should be able to get a Dark Swarm on the high ground with those Lurkers coming down the ramp. Maybe he can drop the Dark Swarm right on top of that other base and cut off two bases at the same time. He will. He's going to get nice. right in on top of this and cut off these both of these two bases, shutting down more mining for Royal, but at the same time, Royal pushing up into the top left-hand corner. This is getting really, really wild. This is a, 
amazing game for game number two. Yeah, it's kind of wild to be. I mean, Hero, honestly, like a, a big props to him holding on like this in such a dire game state, still making it playable and trying to create a chaos ladder to climb. And he might be able to do it if he can stabilize in the top left. But the Vulture's finally finding a bit of a weakness here. There are some units coming out of this Nidus Canal, but more and more drones are falling. And Hero doesn't want to have to make any drones right now. So if he forcing, being forced to replace his economy while he wants to make nothing but units is going to be even more of a frustration for him to overcome. Does have a little bit of a force continuing the bottom right, but there's no energy on this defiler to save this lurker. So unfortunately, this attack is finally going to be quelled in the bottom right here. And Royal currently doubling the supply of heroes. This is looking pretty brutal, so. How can he bring this one back? I I think there's some way, but it will have to involve some big mistakes from Royal. Well, this mine is going to get a big connection here on quite a few of these tanks. I think a lot of them are going to end up going down as they try to run away. Yeah, you know, two at least are going to end up falling. Oh, that one actually survives. I thought that more damage was done by the mine there. But now Royal has bottom right kind of trapped up right now. He's got so many uh, turrets and defensive buildings and uh, forces in that location that another drop is probably just not going to happen. So it's down to Royal to just get out and get another base. And I just don't see that happening with the amount of mech that's being brought forward yeah. by Royal at this point. It's a losing game. The numbers just do not work out for Hero here. And more vultures getting in. I mean, it's just, it's all looking bad now for Hero. Finally, I think the cracks are starting to really show. He's done a great job of trying to pull this one back, but there's almost nothing left for Hero with only 400 minerals in the bank and 80 supply. Ah, uh, it's yeah. I I just don't see it. I mean, if if anyone could do it, it's probably Hero. It's just not going to happen this time. And fair play to him for like you know making a making a run of it. It's just so hard to to fight against Mech Terror when you're this far behind. And like there was no way he could catch up into the game. And now that there's like a big massive critical mass of tanks, it's just too much to overcome. If he could keep the game scrappy and keep the, the tanks spread out on the map and, you know, fight them in small pockets and not allow the tanks to like just get massed up into one big army that's laying siege to his expansions, then maybe it'd be a playable game state. But as it stands, he's trying to get something done with some speed link counterattacks in the bottom right where there isn't very many tanks located. And this is, these are the kind of plays that you need to make to come back in this game. If you could like get all the SEV kills with these lurkers, it'd be something. But there's just barely enough for Royal to keep shutting down these little tactical skirmish plays while he's still getting um, siege lane to him in the top left and is forced to continually dark swarm over and over again just to not die. But he's losing more and more units uh, to those irradiates over and over again. He's getting a few of these tank kills with these lings but yeah if he doesn't do any damage to the Terran infrastructure or economy there's just no way of coming out of this hole yeah the number of tanks in the top left is now insane we should see some drops actually drop on top of this but with two goliaths in the mix uh, it, it's a little bit of a deterrent there um i mean if he dropped like a, a whole bunch of lings and a couple of lurkers on top of that maybe he could clear the tank army in the top right. left it's just how is he going to be able to do all that and you know get another this other base online and keep all this alive and put the pressure on royal i mean royal is just continuing to grow he's got another base in the bottom left hand corner he's getting very close to maxing out 100 supply ahead of his opponent and slowly creeping in here towards the finish yeah yeah it's looking pretty bad um for hero here he made a really good gambit of it but now he's starting to dry up doesn't have that inner income and he had so many of his drone snipes due, due to these like massive vulture raiding parties that he can't even saturate this expansion he just took has done a good job of sniping off these vessels and keeping the vessel fleet uh, low in its count but unable to really do anything about these big massive clumps of tanks I wish, like you say, yeah, he found a few windows to op of opportunity to try and drop onto those tanks. Maybe he could have blown up those positions, but I think that window's closed on him now. There's more and more units here. He's going to do another gambit drop in the bottom right with four um, overlords here. Maybe something can be done, but I think there's enough units here that I don't think there's enough damage is going to be done in the bottom right. No, just basically all lings coming in. Uh, tanks will clean those up, even on under Dark Swarm. Oh. Another vulture run by over here to the top right hand corner and royal is closing in on that base the curtain has been drawn here gg is called hero taps out and royal takes down another insanely good player gets the clapper best and hero
back to back. That is a serious accomplishment. Impressive. All right, hopping on into game number three, YSC versus Royal. Hopefully that last game, the quality wasn't too bad. A bit of a mistake with the uh, uh, recording software on my end, and we're going to have to use Shun's recording for his stream. So uh, if you guys notice that, I'll probably put like a banner or something uh, during that last cast. But yeah, that hasn't happened for a while, has it, Shun? I mean, we used to have those problems all the time. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Way back when, about a year ago, we'd have some uh, hiccups like that. Yeah, we haven't had that for a while, but uh, it happens sometimes. Luckily, I was uh, doing a bit of a live stream with that, so it's a bit of a backup, so to speak. But the quality will take a hit. So, but now we should be back with a little bit of a higher level of production that you guys are familiar with, and a little bit of a wall in from Royal in the natural expansion. Not on eight racks or anything crazy, but definitely going to be wanting to wall in at the forward position here and uh, try and deny some surface area from uh, YSC early game. Maybe wanting to get this 14cc uh, as a bunker expand, 15cc rather. YSC has been putting out some great games lately. Uh, he's been carrying a little bit the Protoss squad in some of the series that he's been involved in. So looking forward to seeing him getting some wins here. Uh, he'll have to go through Royal though, who's on a hot streak. Looking very strong against both these previous two opponents. Um, hopefully we won't see YSC go for like a DT play or anything wild like that. Seems like Royal's really on top of his game right now. I'd just like to see a typical standard YSC style. Uh, fast shuttles and a lot of gateways and see if he can smash down Royal before he gets that third base. Yeah. I mean, this bunker expand, I think, is going to give an, a little bit of an edge to Royal. Nothing too crazy, but we'll make him comfortable in that mid-game stage and maybe reduce some of the hope of YSC from dismantling him. Royal is so far like on an absolute streak. Like If he takes out YSC here and one of the other Zerg squad, then we don't have to worry about Barracks getting absolutely manhandled by the likes of Snow or what have you, which could have happened if uh, Royal was to bite the dust early on. And Royal is kind of like the ace card for uh, Terran right now in dealing with Protoss. So as long as he can navigate this, the, the first few games here, he's going to put Terran in good position. But so far, losing this SCV, building the bunker, and now a little bit annoying for Royal as the other SCV with a bit of a unluckiness here, going to be targeted down and forced to retreat. Another SCV coming off the line to get that production back going again. But so far, taking a bit of damage onto these Marines. Not going to get the kill on that Marine, though. So still finding some damage, but not the infinity damage that Artosis would uh, talk about. Yeah, the bunker is quite late here the marines are pretty low whenever there's been a couple of hits onto uh, any of these marines with the dragoon coming forward you can just start to snipe those down really quickly uh, but in this case he's going to be pushed back he got an scv kill in the main base and he has a lot of information about the follow-up from royal so i feel like ysc looking great right now Oh, almost getting another SCV. I mean, this has gone about as well as you could ever expect against Royal. I mean, he's well known for being uh, nearly unbreakable in the early game. Just look at how it went against Best. He had everything sewn up perfectly. This time, though, YSC right. finds a way in. I mean, yeah, he needed to find some kind of compensation for just allowing Royal to get this bunker expand kind of mostly undeterred. So it does find a bit of damage. The Royal was mining in his expansion before YC had finished his. So still a bit of an economic boon for Royal. But losing a couple of those SCVs does reset that just a little bit and prevent that economic curve from getting a little bit out of hand and uh, allow YC to stay in the ebb and flow of the game a little bit more here. We're going to have some taxation, some Protoss tax pretty soon. Just as the factors are finishing up, that Dragoon range should be done as well. Start to hit that bunker. Unless we had uh, the range or the robotics before range. I didn't see that. There was a little bit too much chaos going on in the Terran base. I but think so. It might be, yeah, robotics before range. And why is he not dealing damage to that bunker, not taking that tax? Maybe he's going to be able to try and get in here. Uh, with the Reaver a little bit quicker, though. Royal has yeah, the, perfect can can uh, the perfect counter with that 
Starport coming online. One Wraith right. should shut everything down. Yeah, exactly what I was about to say, say in a street observation, that Starport coming online gives him a lot of quick tech options, but also does allow him to produce a Wraith to shut down any kind of a uh, Reaver shenanigans. And if you do get the chase uh, down on that uh, shuttle with the Wraith as well, that can be huge. And if uh, the, 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 the speed on the shuttle won't be online for quite some time, so that is a very strong possibility. And he won't scout this Starport for quite a while. It's right in the bottom right pocket. And he's even getting a, a control tower on that as well so it might even see like a little bit of a vulture drop action at some point as well so hmm yeah vulture drop could come through i'd much rather see that wraith produce first though turrets are starting to come up really does seem like he wants to go for some sort of vulture drop which means he'll have less tanks being made uh, at this early yeah. point in the game which could mean that the uh, Reaver could deal some pretty strong damage. I don't know if Rolls completely figured this out. I thought that he had a good read though when he saw that there was no range. And he pushed out to get a Vulture on the map. He scouts that there's no fourth base and puts a mine at that location. I mean, he's removing all the possibilities of what this could be. And he should come to the conclusion that this is going to be a, a shuttle with a Reaver and that the Wraith would be the right counter to that. But he's actually building a, a dropship right now and he's going to drop four uh, Vultures into the main base of YSC while the, sh the shuttle comes into his base. It's just going to come down to who's going to deal more damage with this play though. Yeah, but he in but the thing is is that YC has no idea about this dropship play. Like he didn't check down at the very bottom edge of Royal's base with these observers in his main base. So the surprise factor might be just what uh, Royal needs to do critical damage here. There's gonna be no anti drop defense and at this timing it's so weird, weird to have a dropship. Well the dragoons are actually gonna spot the sh the, sh the dropships in route, so that's a bit of life here for YC. He can start to get his units, but the dragoons are blocking each other, he can't get them through the choke point quick enough, and now the, the Vultures have a few more precious seconds to ravish this probe line. It's really unfortunate that YC couldn't get Dragoon through that choke. He's now going to lose a few additional probes to this effort and, need, and also additional Vulture coming to the third base location to get a double dip damage here. Only one probe falling there though, but it doesn't matter. I think the main base lost mineral time, mineral mining and also losing a few probes there it was more than enough damage here for Royal to kind of cement his position in this game. I'm really confused now, Shun. Um, we s skipped early range, or we delayed range to get the faster robo just to get observers out? Is that what has gone on here? Because I, I didn't know that that was yep. a build. I thought that this was... This, this is how, yeah, well, this is how, like, someone like Quark would play. Like, a lot of Protoss players value the information uh, a lot more than anything else. And they want to get an observer into the... Ooh, nice pickup on those two Dragoons with that mine. Uh, but yeah, they want to get um, the information warfare going their, their favor so they can make the right decisions following that up and they know exactly what the timings of the Terran are when they're making additional factories it's very difficult for the Terran to have any timings that can crack you open and does allow you to min-max your progress and your tech choices as Protoss so he has got that going for him and I, it's not necessarily the worst way of playing but I don't think these additional drops are going to be too successful here but this is a tank and two vultures a little more of a tactical drop with the mines detonating on those Dragoons and the pickup from the dropship they're able to micro this down if this was just pure vulture this wouldn't be too successful Successful, but now the tank's going to get some splash damage on these pros with some good target firing. Uh, actually, going to be getting a, maybe a mine hit as well. Not actually getting the mine hit, but it's just actually pretty good damage from Royal, um, honestly. And he's got enough back at home to defend any kind of pressure to this third base as well. So this is looking pretty, pretty, pretty tight and solid for Royal. Even though he didn't find too much additional damage in the main base there, I think he's doing just barely enough to stay ahead of YSC. And I think that's all he needs to do. YSC looking a little sloppy here. Here, honestly not pulling the probes from the main base what was going on there that tank got an just an uninhibited amount of damage so much damage on those probes in fact that YSC is probably not going to have the probe saturation necessary for four bases and he's switching into re uh, carrier right now in a position that's right in front of where royal was doing that drop so yeah i mean he knows everything you yeah. know he's gonna be able to transition here easily into plus two right he's already got the starport done all he needs to do is just build that uh, science facility start the plus two and start pumping out a ton of goliaths to take this fight 
right before YOC is ready. There's just not very many units out on the map right now for YOC. I can't imagine this carrier play getting online. Can you? Uh, yeah, it's hard to see it like um, bear him much fruit here. He's even like not even started the, the upgrades on the cybernetics core to get the, the weapons uh, upgraded on those carriers yet. So he's really strapped for cash and struggling just to squeeze out the carriers alone. And now Royal knows that there's a two to three minute timing where he can just roll out onto the map and put a lot of pressure onto YC because a lot of resources are being invested into these carriers, which means there's not going to be as much infantry force on the grounds to stop these Terran pushes coming uh, to fruition as he starts to secure this uh, high ground uh, plateau area. If he can get some tanks sieged up here, it's going to be huge. But so far, YC is trying to react to that, trying to charge forward, get on top of the tanks with his Dragoons raining down a lot of slaves disruption shots. Most of those vultures biting us quickly. He's just barely got enough Dragoons here that looks like he could overwhelm this force and win. If he can kill these tanks right here and right now, he may have enough left over that he can get this carrier force out and operational stand just barely. Do my eyes deceive me? Just why is he just beat that entire tank, Vulture, and Goliath army with just pure Dragoon only? That is insane. How did he have so much? With triple carrier being produced behind it, he just overwhelms the, this massive push from Royal. What even happened there? I mean, I don't even know because Roy it's not like Royal's cutting anything. He went up straight up to seven factories before even thinking about taking a fourth command center. So he hasn't made any cuts either. And now the carrier's coming over to pressure. I don't know what these carriers are doing. What are you doing? Don't lose this carrier. Oh, he just loses one carrier for free. The huge miss rally issue that I don't know what happened there. I don't even know how that happened, actually, because the carriers weren't rallied from the Stargate. You must have like clicked them over to just chill a little, maybe click too far on the minimap or something. That was wild because the interceptors weren't even built up on those carriers yet to even be a threat to the Terran. Why is he asleep at the keys right now? What is going on? I mean, he was obviously playing fantastic the way that he held that first attack. Now he's getting shoved back and his carrier number is dismal. Like he lost that first carry. He's got three more on the way, so he will get to four soon which is kind of the scary number, but he didn't deal massive damage to roll. He didn't stop this play from coming, right? He's still going for this seven factory right. uh, push. It's just he really reset the the, dry, uh, the the tank count, which means that the the ground army is not going to be that strong for Royal. But if YSC <laughs> keeps fumbling the ball like this, Royal will just kill him. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of bizarre. It was almost like YSC felt bad about winning the fight. And he was like, hey, have one of my carries as yeah. some compensation. He didn't feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, he just sent it in. That was so strange. It was almost like a miss rally or something. But yeah. why would you be rallying your carrier know, right? right it's so strange so strange yeah. it doesn't even happen I don't know, it's some kind of weird glitch in the matrix here with what's been happening in some of these first few games. Uh, maybe a little bit of nerves showing, but these carriers are trying to like make their way around to the top right corner of the map. But when Terran is out of position, he's going to start harassing the mining expansion while trying to get head-on engagements with Zealot Bomb in the rear here. Tanks are sieging up a little bit late, so the Dragoons did get a lot of damage done for free on this Vulture uh, Goliath threat, and there's not a lot of tanks here, but just barely enough to, to fight against these Dragoons now. Why is he needs to turn back and run at this moment here he is trying to deny this gas being mined at the third base if he can somehow kill this gas and deny a little bit of the economy from coming online for royal maybe he can make something work here but the supplies are looking pretty royal favored as long as he can get um his economy stabilized but so far these carriers are kind of like getting away with murder right now in the top right saying that gas has been killed finally some goliaths are coming into that pocket to ward away these carriers but i don't feel like he should have lost his gas there i feel like he's being stretched a little bit unnecessarily Thin. Well, there's only two Goliaths with this tank army, and there's only like tank, what, eight tanks, seven tanks in this? So yeah. even a small uh, ground army from YSC could just break the back here of Royal. At the same time, carriers uh, could clean up all the Goliaths and take out the tanks for free. Let's see what YSC opts to do. As he's losing his fourth base, he needs to make a move pretty quickly. 
Well, he's deployed all the interceptors by targeting his own building. Now he's going to try and pounce in on this position from the high and low ground simultaneously. There's not a lot of tanks here. He's going after the tanks. He's ignoring the Goliaths and trying to reduce the tank count as quickly as possible so the Dragoons have completely free reign. There's only one or two, one tank remaining now. These Goliaths are absolutely gobbled up by the phase disruption shots off those Dragoons. And YSC is completely cracked open. The army of YSC inversely, though, has lost this Nexus at the 9 o'clock position. So some compensation for losing the army for Royal. But still with three bases mining operation. Oh, look at this drop in the main base. Killed so many probes. He's under the production. And one of these Goliath carriers actually getting targeted down. Just barely saved in the nick of time by YSC. But has done a little bit of a dent into the economic uh, infrastructure of YSC. But so far it's looking a little bit YSC favored. Uh, we do have their fourth base online for Royal in the bottom right. But so far the supplies and uh, game state is heavily favoring YSC. And if he can't produce enough Goliaths to start to fight back these carriers. He's going to lose additional bases here soon, Sam. We're seeing a massive gap between engagements and like decision making, I think. With the, yeah. the engagements going super heavily uh, in favor of YSC, whereas the decision making seems a little bit better for uh, Royal. But I mean, can you still win with just good decision making? If your engagements all go horribly, I feel like this carrier army will eventually uh, just overwhelm you and and run you down and he's losing the base in the bottom right he is you know setting up a position on the other side of the map with a bunch of mines that might be able to catch some of the reinforcements for YSC but he's losing the space there's not a lot of space with all the supply depots that were built here he can't really defend this base in the top right with Goliath he's actually kind of messing himself up by just having such a position here and he's losing his ground army as well why is he overwhelming with Dragoons? I mean, th this game is looking very over 60 supply advantage yeah. with this many carriers. There's almost no way to come back. Yeah, it's really frustrating because there's no way he can both secure this fourth base and defend this third base against the carrier fleet harassing from that dead space in the top right pocket. And without like cloaked wraiths or something to shut this down, it's looking pretty bleak here for Royal. He's going to try and make a gambit of it anyway and just shove his army down uh, on this right hand flank. I think he's actually hesitating because he knows that he can't keep defending as this uh, carrier fleet as well as expand. He's starting to realize how dire his position is. And if YC keeps exploiting this pocket in the top right, there's going to be nothing Royal can do. He's continually bleeding off more and more of these carriers. Royal's going to get mined out and his main and natural in a few moments here as well. But YSC has his uh, expansion set up in the 9 o'clock. This is a huge army of the Dragoons on his high ground plateau. And there's not a lot of tanks in this army, just mostly Goliaths. So I don't think that Royal's going to hold on here, Suzanne. I don't even know what I'm looking at right now. Why are there so many dragoons? There's no zealots at all. This is like, uh, this is like some sort of like AI playing this game or something. What is happening? I am absolutely flabbergasted, but I mean, just a few tanks splattering a lot of these. However, the number is just way too high. Uh, YSC will absolutely dominate and destroy Royal. I am blown away by how this game has gone, Shun. Like, this needs some, like, deeper... Yeah, it's kind of crazy. This needs, like, a deeper... Uh, yeah, analysis later on just to figure out what the hell happened. This does kind of like prove that point where it's not even about making the most optimal units. It's about just spending your money and just leveraging your advantage against your opponent. And he only survived with a few Dragoons just because he had such a critical mass of them. And, you know, sometimes you can just fit that square, he square peg through the circle hole like that saying, GG finally called by Rowan. Um, yeah, the Terran squad were looking pretty crazy. But now that Royal's out of the picture, I feel like Protoss might start to have a bit of a field day if they can also keep the Zerg in check. I almost want to say that this was like a bugged replay or something. Like, it was so weird. <laughs> what was going on with there? The carrier as well. Yeah, with the carrier yeah. just flying Royal. in and dying, and then Royal getting beaten by just pure Dragoon with his army as he came across. Like, what, what even happened? Seven Factory just died to pure Dragoon. It was so yeah, weird. But... Honestly, it's pretty crazy. And he also did the carrier switch under the nose of Royal the entire time. Like, yeah. There was no moment where Royal didn't understand the game state. No, Royal had perfect information and 
YSC really didn't have that good of information. He never saw the, the drop until the last moment, right? Did a ton of damage. He didn't transfer his probes quickly to the fourth base. Like, he had that fourth base going, but he didn't, you know, run his or his main base probes uh, out of the main over to the fourth or anything like that to just preserve some of that economy. But he lost a lot. And the follow-up attack should have done, like, on paper. Let's let's think about on paper, Shun. Yeah. You've got on paper. a Protoss player who's going three Stargate Carrier on four bases. He takes a bunch of damage from uh, a drop, and then seven factory comes across the map to hit him. He should die. <laughs> he should die. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it, it, was, it, 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 was, it was like YFC, like the stars aligned for him because there was one moment where the, he was patient enough to just allow his nine o'clock to die and just wait for the carriers to come back across the map to snipe the tanks so that the Dragoons could actually get a good trade. And it was mostly Vulture, Goliath there of only like six or seven tanks. And because he was able just to come in and snipe those tanks with those carriers it completely flipped to the math so heavily in YSC's favor that it didn't matter that he had an inferior army in terms of what unit composition he had the, the carrier threat harassing the third base just meant that then then he was forced to make pretty much a pure Goliath army and would never ever have the tank count needed to keep those dragoons at bay for, from that point onwards well my life has just been turned upside down guys let's jump into the next game hopefully things start to make sense once again YSC <laughs> is going to be going up against other Queen Arch Jade on that's coming up right after this. Well, here we are out in the woods. We're lost, lost at sea. We got no navigation, no, no compass. Hopefully, Jade on's gonna pull us back onto track. Why is he just? We, we actually went back and took a look at that game, and I still can't make heads or tails of it. Um, why is he just making donations left and right and Royal still not able to come out on top after dominating all these other players? It's really wild to even think about, right? Like, why is he is technically like an A level, A, A tier player, whereas everybody else is S or S plus yeah. tier. And even donated a carrier for free after losing so much damage to the drops. It's pretty wild to think about. Mm. And Terran players do genuinely dislike that map. Maybe for that reason, attacking up into that high ground can be so difficult when you're launching your attacks and just getting overwhelmed by those Dragoons like that. It's really rough to see. Tough not to swallow here for the Terran squad. But finally, we got a, a, a blood across the board here. Bit of a reset. One player from each team has been eliminated. Let's see what the Donga can bring to the table and see if he can take the wind out of this uh, little uh, process sales. YSC spawning cross map. Going to open with a gateway first. Or put on a little bit of zealot pressure. Might do him well here with Jadong opening with the 11 hatchery. Um, but it is cross map, of course, so the zealot will be a little slower. The probe is not going to find right. him right away. It is a small map. Um, retro, of course. It'll get there in time, I think, just as the links are popping out. He will be able to get the Zealot behind the natural mineral patches, but probably not here into the main base. Yeah. And it does kind of favor Jadon that it's cross map by going for this hatchery first because it makes it just a little bit harder for the Zealot to get that drone kill to negate the, the timing of this build. Uh, as long as Jadon does lose a single drone to the Zealot pressure, he's going to be feeling a nice little advantage there. But if the drone was to die from the Zealot pressure, then you might as well have gone over pool basically as the mathematics on that. But with the cross map positioning, the Zealot's got the advantage of not being necessarily scouted, although I think this Overlord is just barely going to spot it coming up to this third base location so Jadong's now aware of the, the zealot and the timing of that coming up here to 12 so maybe some damage can be done to this but there's no way he's gonna get the kill on this he's gonna have to like eventually run back behind the minerals and try and get some trades there but he wants to try and force the links to come over here and put a lot of damage down onto this hatchery before it's a time to finish yeah just the one zealot will keep the HP at the same level as it continues to build Takes a little damage on that drone. Gotta be careful. Could have gotten the moving shot with that probe, and then the drone would be sacrificed. You would have that trade, what you were saying earlier. With just one drone going down, it's gonna even out the overall build choices, but 
Jadon going to get his links over here. With two zealots, you can actually kill the hatchery. Slowly but surely, it will diminish in HP. You actually do have to get over here and stop that from happening. Jadon going to wait until he's got the appropriate number of links to dive on top of that. But why is he just going to fall back behind those mineral patches? Be as annoying as possible while sending more zealots on the, out on the map here. Yeah, but he has really heavily delayed making a forge. So if Jadon... Uh, uh, wow. If Jadon wanted to, then he could put a lot of pressure on here and uh, do some damage of a big Ling Flood, but it's going to take him some time for this Overlord to even confirm that that's been the choice of tech here. He sees the core in the wall now with this Overlord, and he doesn't know if there's a forge in the main yet or not. He's only He hasn't even started that forge in his main base, so this could be a very aggressive build out of YSC, not relying on any cannons. So a little bit of a gamble from him. This gamble could end up really biting him in the butt here with Jadon starting his hydralis den and he will begin hydro production very soon only one drone mining over at the third could be a tell for ysc that some aggression is coming but right. you know he's, he's not going to want to mine over here anyway with the zealots behind the mineral patches it's a little bit dangerous so you know there could be a bit of a mind game playing out right now pretty soon though jadong's going to start to pop out hydras and you can't hide it uh, for for much for very long with the zealots sitting back here and watching everything that pops out of the hatch yeah, now now YSC has moved out with these zealots, and as for all Jadong knows, these zealots are being committed out onto the map to attack. He doesn't know for sure until they just start to run back now that they aren't being committed out onto the map, but Jadong's just going to reveal these hydras anyway and not be afraid to show him the build and try and clean up these zealots very cost efficiently before launching his assault. And this actually might still work out well for Jadong because of how slow the forge is. Now YSC is going to have to throw down at least three cannons, and Jadong could just fake this hydra bust. He doesn't actually have to commit to this. He could just make a few pressure the wall here and start to transition into a much more standard game after the fact that looks to be the path jadon is preparing to walk more drones popping out of the main base and likely to start adding on more hatcheries in just another few moments uh, the hydra number is not super high a couple of lings staying back at home a really prudent decision here for jadon making sure that if there were a few zealots out on the map that they couldn't suddenly run in and just kill that third hatchery, that third base, because it is quite low. So he's he's really acting uh, very cautiously here, even though he's going for this aggressive play. He's making sure that he has room to take this into a late game, that he's not going to be forced to all in here. Yeah, and of course they're going to be coming in here and confirming that it is just a fake Hydra, but sees the drones at the third base and knows that at the very least this is a four hatch Hydra and he's going to be all right for another minute or so. So no additional cannons or defenses will be made. Instead, both players are going to be transitioning to a much more standard mid-game setup. Fifth hatchery already being added for Jadong. And he wants to put the pressure on with these zealots to try and deny this uh, gateway being sniped by the ranged uh, hydras as well. It does force Jadong to micro. But without the speed kicking in for another minute or so, um, eventually he will be able to whittle down these zealots and maybe get the kill on that gateway. Doing a great job there, Jadong. Targeting down individual zealots. Making that uh, trade a little bit worse. You see the zealots come out. He targets down one zealot and tries to get it. Going to target down another yeah. low HP zealot. He gets both of those and he's just whittling this down very, very quickly. If you just run right. backwards and uh, just, you know, A click next to the zealots, you'll never get uh, the kills on many of these. But he's managed to pick off a load of the zealots. And even though he's not going to get the wall, it seems, uh, I, I still favor this for Jadong. Like, he's killed so many yeah. zealots with just good micro. And the army's going to be much, much weaker for YSC when he finally decides to come out with that plus one in legs upgrade. Yeah, I mean, YSC, like, saved his production cycles a little bit there. He can produce an additional zealot each cycle now, but at the cost of many of his initial zealots. So the, the, the initial timings will be much weaker, and his follow-up timings will be stronger, but that means that Jadon's going to get away with murder for, like, a, a good minute or two here, because there's not going to be a strong timing that YSC can execute anymore. Yeah, YSC coming out here, but it's looking like a pretty weak attack the fangs have been removed from the mouth of this protoss beast is pushing out here trying to take this little engagement but a few links 
are going to be assisting these hydras and pushing everything back and as that hydralist number swells we should see this zealot attack get shut down it's all comes to the uh, micro from jadong and so far it's looked very very good look at that split very wow. very well done well, he's being so annoying with such few units which is great to see because this is exactly what you need to do as zerg to really flip the the script on the protoss player because usually the zerg have complete dominance in the early game and then the mid game the protoss become alive but if you do these kinds of shenanigans to run rings around the protoss player it can be very hard for them to find their footing in that mid game and this is the point where they're going to be going up into like five to eight gateways and thinking about taking their third base so any annoyance you can do to the protoss player is a pretty big deal at this junction hiding a few hydras in the top right hand corner very sneaky stuff there jadon keeping those two units alive we'll be able to bring them to bear a little bit later on looks like we've got some sort of flying unit heading up okay i think that's a corsair moving over towards the third base of jadon and he's moving his hydras up towards the front at nine minutes we should have storm and there it is that's going to deter jadon from pushing in any farther but he can absolutely take this fight with zealots if no storms are forthcoming yeah i mean those high templars were very deep into the defensive pocket of ysc far too far away to come out and help those zealots but that's a beautiful storm there does catch quite a few of those hydras only getting two confirmed kills but the third base is being delayed with this soft contained setup at the moment and the zealot templar is not that much of a threat as long as you're paying attention you keep dodging back from the storms and microing against the zealots eventually you will win those skirmishes but you do have to be microing constantly and with the zealots being whittled down to a nub like this there's not going to be any timing for YSC to come out here and take favorable trades unless um, Jadong makes some big mistakes and like loses all of his um, hydras to a storm here or there even a dark arc on being made he's worried about the potential of Jadong doing a mutilisk switch here and suddenly catching of his pants down with like 10 uh, mutilisks just swooping in and sniping all the templars but that means there's even fewer units being made to deal with this huge hydro threat yeah the corsair did get in there to the third base and saw the spire so really important information from ysc but it might be a misdirect from jadon no. making lurkers now up here on the high ground that's so annoying to deal with ysc is gonna have to push uphill against lurkers with uh observers and zealots i, I mean just a couple of observer snipes will slow down this uh, third base take for YSC by a long time. And Jadong's already getting his fourth. He's got you know, double upgrades rolling. He's got lurkers popping out all over the place. His economy is looking fantastic. And he's actually just surpassed the supply of YSG. Yeah. So everything looking fantastic for Jadong right now. Yeah, these high ground natural third expansions are like double-edged swords. They're both easy to defend, but hard to take. And if you can just sort of like soft contain your opponent and have a few lurkers on the high ground, it's just so cost efficient and can delay your opponent for so long from taking their own expansion. And like we see Jadong here, just able to um, keep the Protoss contained on two bases while going all the way up into four. He could even maybe consider doing like some uh, Lurker drop tactics as well, dropping a few Lurkers into the mineral lines of uh, YSC here, while also um, distracting him, trying to take these expansions. YSC is desperate to come up here, laying down some Sonic Storms onto these Lurker Hydro positions to try and uh, deal with these as cost efficiently as possible. It's losing a lot of the HP and lives of these uh, Zealots to do so. Now, the wraparound attack, pincer maneuver coming from both sides most of the energy is dried up from these high templar units they can't afford a storm maelstrom comes out to buy some time there's a storm available in just a few seconds here on these high templars on the high ground so just barely holding on is ysc right now more hydro streaming in from the low ground on the left hand side but now the storms are starting to come online on those high templars so ysc should be able to hold these positions for the time being i think he's just barely going to get this third online but at what cost then ysc wiping a bead of sweat off of his brow right now that was close call for him holding that high ground base was not a sure thing really really uh, close moment there as jadon jumped on top of that last templar he got the maelstrom down on every hydra and i think that's what clutched it out there he managed to buy enough time for the extra storm does end up dying in the end though that templar finished off trying to get greedy with a little storm on those idle 
Idris, but Gaydon is everywhere right now. He's got eyes in the back of his head, and they're all staring directly at the units of YSC. He is paying attention all over the place and eking out every little advantage that he can. Yeah, he's going to be setting himself up into one big giant eye of Sauron to just descend upon him from all occasions on the map where Jadong's going to be thinking about setting up more and more bases in the time being as well. And now that we see this third base coming online, we'll finally see Jadong start to go into that hive tech. He was happy to stay on battle zerg for the time being. If you if you can kill the Protoss player or prevent him from taking their third base, you don't need to even tech into hive. But once they get that third base online, you can start to think about your hive tech, even if it is a little bit late, and uh, start to advance towards plague, 3-3 three, three upgrades, and eventually getting back into more and more expansions. But even just four base zerg uh, going into hive tech right now is adequate enough production for Jadong to get a total of about 10 hatcheries online and uh, have more than enough production to deal with anything that YSC can field right now. And the supplies are quite indicative of that. 2-1 upgrades on these uh, Protoss units, but Jadong's only behind like 20 or so supplies, so if he can just buy a few more moments of time here to swell up his army a little bit more, he's going to be able to just completely gobble up this army of YSC. He needs to have perfect storms, and this is a massive, critical mass of Dragoons that he has been able to field those, so if he can maintain this Dragoon count and skirmish cost efficiently here with Jadong, there is hope for this Pro's player zone. Jadong begrudgingly backing up into a concave position over at his natural. His third and his fourth are all heavily defended. He's waiting for those extra layers of tech to come online. That hive is going to be coming out soon. We've got Ling upgrades on the way as well. Hydra is pushing back this dragon force as it tries to cross the bridge. This is just textbook play for zvp on this map retro this is exactly the style of game we've seen time and time again but with jadong having a good early game position this mid game is looking incredibly strong he just needs to hold on a little bit longer against the critical mass of dragons until he has defiler out he's going to be counter-attacking picking off bases like this and looking for high templar snipes to just lower the efficiency of that army yeah he can also just like make eggs and be annoying on these ramps to cover his retreat and make it even uh, more difficult to attack up into these positions and basically buy a few precious moments of time is all that jadong needs here to for this tech to finally come online adrenal glands on those zerglings more melee upgrades more carapace upgrades a few more lurkers being churned turned out and eventually like that plague coming relevant with dark swarm as well to shut down any hope of these dragoons from laying siege to these positions it's going to be an absolute nightmare for YSC in the coming moments of this game if he can't find any uh, weaknesses in the carapace of Jadong here I gotta say YSC is just not finding anything and Jadong is playing an excellent defensive game it's yeah. not uh, everything set up perfectly at each of these bases, and every time YSC tries to come forward, he looks uh, completely impotent against the army that uh, Jadong has put together. Look at how he's trying to shove through this area. Uh, even when he's just, you know, ramming it down the, the throat of Jadong, Jadong continuing to send reinforcements forward and having the right number of lurkers spread just enough to not take critical damage from these storms, backing away dodging all the storms as they come out. He's going to come from a flank now, and YSC is in danger of being completely swallowed up. Look at the rallies coming out of all these hatcheries. Wow. Jadon bringing everything together to finish off this Protoss army. This is, I mean, a horrible situation for YSC. I'm not sure he's going to tap out right now, but I'm sure he's he considering it. <laughs> Yeah, he's considering it for sure. He can't even get this base uh, get a rolling in the bottom left here. I mean, he's not technically dead yet, but it, the writing is on the wall. You, you, the Zerg is ahead in bases. We'll be able to secure more. You've just had your entire army decimated. The Zerg is ahead in supply by 40 right now. He doesn't know about the supplies, but he knows just how far behind he is in the curve of this game. He knows his main and natural. His main base actually mined out already. His natural was soon to follow. He's going to be on like 1.5 base economy. And they wouldn't even get this third base on online after being mined out is going to be absolute ruins for YSC. So yeah, I think it's just 
going to be a few trades away from him type tapping out in this game, saying it's going to be a, a very soon by the looks of it. ISC going to make a move over here to the top right. There's not even a drone up on this high ground yet, but Jadong just holding that position, making sure that YSC is frustrated at every turn. He cannot make any progress anywhere. He finally gets up this ramp, but there's a big counterattack heading towards 6 o'clock. I'm not sure that YSC has the storm available to deal with this. He's just going to dive right on top of that. He gets the storms immediately. But we've got a Defiler plus so many units coming up this ramp. I mean, this is yeah. this is over. He can't hold this third base. And the fourth. I mean, it's just a, a one more push away for Jadong. He still has Defiler. I mean, he hasn't even used the energy here yet. And he could throw down a Plague. He could throw down a Dark Swarm. He's going to throw down a Dark Swarm on the high ground. There's no way that YSC is going to push that back. Yeah, I mean, right now his natural is being mined out as well. Like, he's basically not even mining at this point. He's going to be long distance mining until the 3 o'clock finishes up. Then he's back to one base economy. So Jadon can just rally across units across the map. And even if he trades at like a 20 to 30% efficiency, he'll eventually still win as well. So Jadon doesn't have to really do a lot to win this game. If anything, do, like, I don't think that Jadon could possibly lose this game unless he like went AFK at this point. Like, or maybe like he gets Donny Darko and like a jet engine falls on his his head or something you know we saw miracles happen in that last game versus royal but if ysc wins this one i'll eat my own foot this is impossible yeah this is this rough point. man um i mean he has to like not borrow his lurkers and let them all get scored and not even attack move in his army and stuff like there's just no way at this point even just any kind of efficient trading here from jay on will spell disaster for ysc he's not even mining right now guys his third base isn't even finished yeah he's not mining all of his probes are going to be sent over to the center right and if Jadon gets in there with a lurker drop or something like that, can you imagine the the pandemonium that would occur? <laughs> like 70 probes right now on one base. That would be yeah. insanity. Uh, here comes that force of Jadon just slowly pushing forward here. He doesn't want to get too uh, cost inefficient. Another play goes down on a bunch more of these zealots. It's just making this uh, Protoss army so much more tasty to devour. And yeah. Lings are going to come forward to do that devouring here very, very shortly. You need to have a little bit of chili sauce in your kebab to help wash it down. Saying it does make it go down a treat and makes it all the more tasty. Can't fault Jadon for that choice at all. GG finally called from YSC. And now we're going to have Jadon going up against either JYJ or Barracks. And I have to say, like, that's going to be a good TVZ. Barracks is going to be sent out next after YSC was eliminated. Jadon having a great day here. Honestly, looking fantastic in game number one. And he's looked great uh, for a few weeks now. Like, he's, been, he's been doing better and better lately. Well, I mean, it's certainly in contrast to his previous performance in the most recent seasons, yeah, I would say so. So it's nice to see him, even though his age does kind of, I guess, um, hinder you a little bit, um, does seem to be able to still hang with the, the top names here. And I'd love to see it, to be honest with you. Like, it's nice to see Ladonga back in some kind of a condition here to compete. And uh, honestly, though, I feel like this is going to be a Barracks win. Barracks is like 70% in this matchup in Pro League. I think 60 plus percent all games overall ever. Um, he's very weak in Terran versus Protoss. So if he does win against Jadong here, I feel he's going to get absolutely manhandled by Snow afterwards. But I am still feeling like he is going to be able to beat the Dong here. Oh, there's a good chance that he'll be able to take him down but Jadong ever since uh, I was actually talking about this uh, in some of my replay casts was when Flash came back I feel like it might have made Jadong like it might have lit a fire back up in his belly you know like his old competition is is coming back and yeah you know that that could have a real effect. I mean, it sounds funny. It sounds silly, but it's, it's not, not a joke. 
Um, I, I, just to give that a bit of context, there was a, a touching moment in an interview during one of the uh, re ASLs that Flash played in uh, most recently before he had to do his little military stint. Um, Jadong basically said, uh, Flash is God. And uh, Flash actually like laughed a little bit, but then actually started crying on stage. Like, And so those two players have like a kind of uncharacteristic amount of respect for one another. And yeah, I, I, I can only imagine that just Flash being back in the scene is enough for Jadong to be like, okay, it's, it's time to fucking go. Right. Yeah, if his old competition's back, Maybe he's gonna really start to take it more seriously. Um, we saw him get kind of smashed by Flash in the series between the two of them. And, you know, he's been back for a while. So that's got to be a little bit embarrassing as well. Like, you know, I used to be in the finals with you almost every season, OSL, MSL. And now you've had this long break and you're still able to take me down? Like, <laughs> it's not acceptable. We need to put up a better showing than this, so... Um, Jadong absolutely capable of putting in the hours if he's properly motivated. We'll just see if he's able to take down an opponent like Barracks, who's been obviously practicing his heart out lately. Yeah. And honestly, I don't think age is as much of a factor in StarCraft as people once thought. It seems like that the 30-year-olds are still hanging, and there was a little bit of a concern because uh, back in the early days of uh, StarCraft, uh, once you did hit that sort of like 30-plus age limit, it seemed like your ability dropped off quite significantly. But that could just be down to you know you, how your tenacity for the game and you know your life moving on, and not have quite having the same kind of passion to put in those extra hours to to really grind. And maybe Jayong now. With flashback on the table does find that you know reinvigoration to actually give his a game and i don't think his age is going to be that much of a hindrance for him i mean I, I still feel like he can bring his a game and so far he's he's shown quite a lot of confidence in the most recent weeks of kcm and uh, i would love to see him uh, put a bit more time into his practice and show us some of those crazy shenanigans he used to do once upon a time well i've got more to say about this topic but we've got some links popping out here for jadong jadong is looking like he wants to do uh, maybe a uh, ling attack here or maybe he's just waiting for uh, barracks to pull the trigger on like a, a naked marine attack or just the two racks move out oh no he's going in he's going for it whoa this is wild he's just gonna get in here and try to run past no he's not gonna be able to SUVs are pulled. This is not looking good, dude. Barracks just took a great trade. Uh, yeah, that's a mistake from Jadong. He would have been way better off just waiting until this 4 minute 50 timing for the, the medics to finish out and then eventually the push coming and then doing a nice little backstab or wraparound action. But instead tried to force the issue. Yeah, that's definitely a, a strange misstep there from Jadong. Maybe he thought he could kill the one Marine on top and then we'd have enough surface area to squeeze through. But he had to kill two Marines and Barracks actually did a very nice little um, finesse thing of shifting over his marines ever so slightly to deny the surface air of the lings from finding any kind of potential of getting there and finding any kind of a trade advantage so nicely handled by barracks in the early game and already has thwarted the the shenanigans of old of jadong but he's has invested in a one comsat early to scan jadong doesn't really get any information for that besides knowing it's not a complete all-in but uh yeah because he's trying to like hedge his bets and not commit to making two comsats too quickly here he's gonna just have to assume it's muters and he does assume correctly, but if Jadon was going for like a two hatch lurker here, he would have been punished. Not going to get punished. Barracks has four racks plus one. So he wasn't even planning to move out at that like four minute 50 timing. Jadon would have just been sitting outside with links, but he would have still been better off than just diving in and losing everything. Um, as it stands, Jadon is at a very low percent chance of winning, but. There are some finesse moves that can be done. It's just the numbers seriously in favor of Barracks right now. And he's going to add on that second scanner. Eventually, he will get full information of what's going on in Jadong's base. And Jadong is not really doing much. He's not building a third. He isn't really trying. Oh, he is building a third. Excuse me. He's got the third right over at that center right. So actually, you know what? This is probably the best possible thing that Jadong can do is go into Hydralis Defiler. If you're really far behind 
There's no way you're going to be able to play it out in a normal game, but Hydra's Defiler can give you options to uh, trade a little bit more efficiently and maybe bring this one back. Yeah, maybe. He may even just try to do like a three hatch all in Muta if he feels like the turret positioning is a little bit weak and can be exploited from Barracks, but I don't think that play would be wise against someone of Barracks's caliber. I think he is wisely just going to throw down the, the Hydralisk Den and try to transition, but yeah, I don't think there's really anything Jadon can do here, but try and like, you know, try and play standard from a slightly awkward position and it's kind of what you have to do a lot as uh it's just even when you're behind you kind of do the same strategy but just try and make it work anyway and it can be a bit frustrating but some of the best zergs can still pull it off does lose one of his mutilists for only one marine though so already still going um Barracks's way for the time being. Jadong is in a little bit of a frustrating position. If he can somehow get this bio group under control before the rejoins uh, with these naked marines, then he's going to be okay. But these naked marines want to join up with this bio group here. And Jadong, I don't think, is going to be able to stop this. He's not going to be able to stop it. And he loses another Mutilus. Barracks is calling uh, the strategy here from Jadong. He's decided it's going to be a mass Mutilus play, and he's going into a armory to counter that he will be pumping out some valkyries do we have hydrogen yes we do so with the lurker upgrade coming if he gets a few lurkers out in time uh, to deal with this marine medic as it pushes across the map uh, with the assistance of the valkyries he might just be able to hold on in time and get himself into a decent enough position where he can play it out uh, long term with hydralis defiler yeah, but I think that there will be a critical timing here for Barracks to really exploit Jadong, and I, I think it's going to come down to if Jadong can maybe snipe one of these Valkyries, or maybe get the Mutaling stab on this bio group before it becomes too strong and out of control. So far, though, has caught this bio force out of position a few times. Uh, not the worst of trades for Jadong. The supplies are actually still indicative of Jadong doing reasonably well, but it's a little bit misleading on the supplies, especially with uh, Barracks is uh, happily to cut uh, some of his uh, SCV production here just to squeeze out more rounds of marines uh, but it looks like he's going to be going straight into a science facility um after just making a, a one or two valkyries i don't think he's going to commit into making too many of these but uh i think so far jaylong's doing a good enough job of slowing the barracks down but honestly i don't think the lurker aspect is nearly quick enough like we see these naked marines already committing to the, the front there's no sunkens here lurker aspect isn't even finished i think it's only just now finished there's going to be a huge window about 40 seconds for a, a barracks to exploit yeah, he's going to come in, try to exploit this. However, Lings and Mutas are going to make their way into this natural just barely in time. Looks like he's going to save it. I think the Lurkers might just barely be able to pop out in time. They're still not quite out of these eggs morphing, but the Marines arrive with not much support. Oh my gosh, more Lurkers going to pop out right here. Can he actually kill all of these Marines before losing a bunch of drones? He's going to bring the Mutas up to try and deal with this. This is a very... Clutch defense from Jadon. That was so close. Every single area that he was about to be broken in, he just barely holds on with only losing a few drones in each spot. Yeah, literally hang on. Let's get into this TF there. Absolutely wild stuff. Like, literally moving away from catastrophic damage being dealt to him by that marine timing attack from Barrax. He's a very astute Terran versus Zerg player. He knows those tiny little windows to exploit, and that's why he's got such a high win percentage in this game. But so Jake is hanging on by a thread, able to completely dismantle those efforts. So he's not out of the woods yet, but he has stabilized for the time being, and some scourge up now out on the map to try and catch these Valkyries out of the position. Ooh. Oh, he's gonna get at least two two Valkyries going down immediately is fantastic for him getting rid of that anti-air threat more Scourge are gonna be coming out here soon that I mean that's such an, uh, a huge huge uh, investment for Barracks at this point in the game and he's actually gonna go into drops now too if those get shut down as well we're gonna see a very good chance that Jadon can just dominate in this game now, to be fair, though, there's not a lot of overlook scouting information in this sub refresh. It's just these mutes of Scourge. These mutes of Scourge actually miss a trajectory of these drops. It's going to be huge. I think too many misses it. It was so close. That was so close. He's just barely not seeing yeah. it here. I think if he just turns a little bit with this army, these mutas are just on the periphery. Can they see it? Oh my god, there they are. He sees it. He sees it, but it's too late. The Marines are going to start to pop out here. The Scourge 
Dive on top. He kills one of the dropships. He's going to kill the other one, but the Marines all get out of these drops, and so many drones are going to die. Oh, dude. This was so close from Jadong. Just a little bit better on the positioning, and he would have absolutely held this, but as it stands, Barry's got critical damage over in this base the main base is crushed the defiler pops out but it's too late gg damn this is a great example of why zerg versus terran is such an incredibly hard matchup absolute razor's edge of a defense there in the end who jadong gets knocked out there really intense gambit by barracks but now going into this game against snow it's gonna be gritting his teeth just biting down and getting ready for the pain that is snow's uh, aggressive protoss play i mean he's already experienced it previously in the asl i'm sure he's not looking forward to this one yeah this is, this is what i was saying to you before um uh, when, uh, between casts, well, who are they going to send out? JYJ or Barracks? Because if Barracks beats Jadon, when he's going to have to fight against Snow, and he, he might feel a little bit of pressure from that because Snow has, like, in the past, completely dismantled him with, like, Reavers with, like, crazy double-digit numbers on their kill counts, completely overwhelming him with control. And it looks like Barracks is just going to take his own gas here, deny the gas deal, but he's going to bite a little bit of a bullet on his Barracks timing, uh, ironically, as a result of trying to secure this gas deal. Interesting position on that Barracks as well. Um, I mean, it makes sense to have a, a spot like this. You know, you build the, the supply depot. Uh, to the right of the barracks then you have that little bit of space to maneuver you can protect your gas and your mineral line um, with those marines but it, it's just maybe some new tech here out of some of these Terran players I've seen this a little bit more frequently lately uh, and it's interesting to see those small adjustments and advancements in each of the matchups I don't know if it'll come into play in this game I don't I'm not sure if snow wants to aggress with zealots I mean he's got the gateway out in the front here which means usually you're gonna start to put on that pressure but it doesn't necessarily mean that he has to he could just wait for a dragoon here as well yeah he also does just give it a little bit of a faster timing on his dragoons reaching the front as well don't necessarily have to commit to the zealot harassment or already barracks has slowed himself down a little bit by you know preventing the gas deal if you think about it like that mm -hmm. so snow is just saying okay well you swallow that uh, early loss and i'll just won't even bother trying to pressure you and we'll just play a normal standard game from this slightly weird opening that you've gone for and hopefully that slight issue of tech timing from barracks will uh, be beaten out by snow who won't have any slowdown in the early game Ooh, great blocking here with this probe. He's going to get the moving shot as well. Oh. SCV will end up going down. Nothing that you can do about that there. Barracks, just pure control from Snow. Going to take that down. Two SCVs still in the gas in this main. Is that a mistake yeah. or is he going to go for some so. sort of tech? It may be, yeah. I think this will be like a vulture drop because he hasn't made a second factory, which if he hasn't made a second factory, it kind of makes me think he wants to go for vulture drop here. Yeah, it's looking like that. Um, first vulture is going to be made. He still has two on the gas, so I got to imagine a starport is about to be built. He will start the CC at least. And the probe here checking at the front. The Dragoon will come forward to confirm in just a moment. No. But that doesn't mean he's going to be aware of this. Uh... Oh my gosh. Okay, he's going to hop out this direction. That is so interesting. There's not even a Dragoon out in the front just yet. But it's going to be coming soon. So he's going to avoid it completely. Try to sneak around the map and get in there. But he's already messed it up once. Can he get it here on the second try? No, not going to happen. Barracks having a hard time getting this vulture to drop over. He's probably practiced this a few times before. He does get it now, go. finally. There we go. Yeah. Three is the magic number, Sam. You know, you know what they say? Third time is charm. Finally going to be getting that vulture through. For a minute there, I thought it was going to be a caster's curse and that vulture was never going to make its way through and you kind of jinxed it by saying it was. I was a little bit disappointed in you. <laughs> well, it really didn't matter. Snow didn't even have his goon on the other side of the map, so <laughs> he's, he's the front of the you know 
The front of the base wasn't even blocked. Like, you could have just walked out the front. Barracks, um... You know, doing an extra little backflip there. Unnecessary uh, acrobatics from him. Uh, as Snow just plays a completely standard game. With a bunch of goons being built and... Barracks starts to aggress out here on the map. What is he going to accomplish with this push? Just one tank, a few marines, and a vulture? I feel like this is that push which is meant to allow you to put mines in front of the Protoss base, but he's already got mines in front of the Protoss base. So what is this going to accomplish? It might accomplish him losing his forces to the Reaver that's about to pop out, but he has got a small window to exploit. If he can get on top of these three Dragoons and not take too many hits on this tank, maybe he can get something done. Has taken quite a lot of damage with that tank already. Just a few disruption shots will finish that off. Probes also being pulled off the line to target fire the probes before they can be borrowed as well, so not many deep mines available. Another two shots on that tank, just one more shot from those Dragoons eventually. It does get the target fire down on that mine as well. A bit of the damage onto these probes with that Vulture, finding a couple of kills onto these pros but not really the kind of damage that he would like to does try and get some follow-up kills with those marines unable to find anything and so far this has gone a little bit snow's way snow's hung on to this natural base beautifully you know he almost got that mine close enough to connect with the dragoon but barely not going to get the damage that he was looking for. Now back at home, dropping a few turrets to prepare for this uh, return attack, this return aggression with the Reaver, and he's just not got the turrets quite there in time. And Snow is now active with the Reaver in the main base of Barracks. This is the scary moment here where turrets are going to start to go down, and then... Uh, things yeah. are really going to start to spiral out of control for Barracks. I mean, if Snow's on top of his Reaver control, we could see fireworks here, but I think that Barracks is trying everything in his power to not let that happen. He knows just how badly this can skyrocket out of control. He's had it happen so many times. He's doing everything in his power just to dog this shuttle around with his units and prevent any critical damage being done. So far, so good, but Snow is also taking a third base behind this reasonably on curve, so even if he just does minimal damage here, it's still going to be a little bit Snow favored. Well, Barrack's doing a pretty reasonable job. He's actually getting blocked by an SCV on the ramp right now. Not able to get his units into position. I think he will finally get that on a mineral command to get out of the way. Oh, was actually uh, repairing, trying to repair the tank. There's so much space in this main base for Snow to work with. I feel like he should be getting some damage here, but he just hasn't been able to find any yet. And Barracks has done a great job of pushing this back. Is it really going to be the case that he won't be able to find any damage? That's kind of insane at this point. Oh, just needs to block. All he needs to do is block. Oh, okay. Duds. Pretty good job there. I mean, I thought that the Vulture was going to be able to block that uh, Scarab as soon as it got out of the way, though. Uh, it could have been yeah. calamitous, but it ends up dudding in the end. Yeah. Uh, crisis has been averted for the time being and yeah so far this is probably best as we could hope for for barracks i mean usually he'd be completely destroyed by the shuttle control of snow in their pre compared to their previous game so this is probably one of the better showings he's had against snow and if he can find his footing maybe he can find his confidence again and start to uh, turn the tide on the psychological warfare that he's currently having to endure from uh, the previous torturous games that he's had to uh, weather against the likes of snow and finally maybe he can get a little bit of heat underneath him to start to melt this snowman that's been uh, haunting his nightmares i think just this opener alone is going to be a massive boost to his confidence no matter what happens in the rest of the game he knows that he's held the aggression from snow the reaver control not enough to tear him apart in this game and he will be able to move forward into the next stages with four factories and a reasonable economy to work with uh, five factories in fact will be thrown down and that is a pretty standard play at this point in time this point in the meta very normal to see five factory play uh, in order just to take your own third base uh, and it's no. snow that's kind of developed that meta funnily enough right he's the one who drove the terran meta into the position we're in now
it's a tiny well yeah and unironically that is the case this is kind of the counter to the reaver style it does uh, prevent the protoss from slowing you down too much and taking your third base and being able to just shove units down the protoss's throat and especially on this map where it's very uh, difficult to get across these three bridges leading into the center of the map you need to have a lot of units at your disposal just to take that third base safely and put some pressure onto the protoss player so he can't just you know expand too greedily as well behind it that annoying reaver here at the front is going to force the first siege up from barracks only inches in front of his bunker he's going to slowly slide his way forward here that's a pretty good siege getting some space for himself and covering the bridges does need to be very careful though as he comes forward snow is going to be looking for any opportunity to snipe tanks and goliaths as they push out there's only three goliaths here which is a little bit worrisome generally the acceptable number is four that'll allow you to two shot those uh shuttles it's even gonna lose one now so down to just two total goliaths which makes this defense a little bit harder his tanks are also very stacked up right now which makes me a little bit worried for Barracks, although he has pushed this out uh, reasonably well and will be able to take his third base. Yeah, luckily he's got no Zealot Bombs or uh, anything like that to worry about or Storms just yet, so the, the clumped up tanks will be okay for a few minutes here and then eventually he'll want to avoid doing that too much. But now, can be taking this third base relatively undeterred from Snow. He may, be, he may attempt to be a little bit annoying on this left-hand flank with the Dragoons here. But the main issue is going to be, can Barracks get across these bridges uh, without too much uh, damage being done to him? Because if, if he can start to find some way of coming out onto the map, he can slow down this economic growth of Snow, which he's trying to accept this base in the bottom left right now. It does get the Observer snipe uh, after that Vulture pressure on the left-hand side. Denying any kind of vision from Snow is going to be critical here. If Snow is on, um, knowing of some of the army movements of Barracks, he could get into some good positions here. So far, he's getting across the bridges with pretty much nothing in his way. But I think Snow wants to try and gobble up some of this army right here, right now. The big flood of speed zealots as soon as he comes across the bridge completely. Inching across the bridges here. Most of the tanks are still on the other side. So I think this could be a good trade for Barracks. We'll just have to see how the Templar and Storms land. And so far they've done very very well and snow not going to aggress here any further i love the decision making from snow to just pull back the moment that the tanks are pushed back to the other side of the bridge and just controlling this space here no. excellent decision making excellent play from him he takes a few tanks and just backs up without losing any dragoons I, th I feel like he, uh, snow is going to go for a very uh, methodical tentative win in this game he's going to you know just secure his fourth base and just slowly go into pure gateway man style he can take a fifth base from here if he needs to and i feel like he's slowly but surely going to squeeze barracks out of this game i think barracks is still a bit of a fighting chance if he can get out onto this map with these vultures do a run by on the right hand side get in these at this probe line at the third natural third base maybe something could be said for this i don't think there's anything defending the probes on the right hand side right now but the vultures are being a little bit slow in getting down there I don't think there's much defending over in the bottom left hand corner either just one cannon in bottom right um it's a shame that barracks isn't actually charging over there to deal some damage and snow it feels like is completely unafraid of barracks doing so is not even reacting yeah. to those units being on the right hand side of the map he's just tracking the main army of tanks and uh, not even concerning himself with uh, this small raiding force of vultures which could have done massive damage yeah so it's a little bit, bit of a missed opportunity there i mean on the one hand like barracks's cause just not to throw away his vultures because if he does lose them then he'll, he'll lose the follow-up trades with snow not having enough vultures to soak up those zealots but he's also missed some critical damage windows of coming back in this game and mitigating some of the lead that snow's been able to secure for himself he is slowing down the timing of this base being thrown down but it's not a lot if you can get the templar snipes here before Storms throw down. That's a pretty good trade. Now Dragoons are also boxed in, so laying down some mines will maybe get a few additional further up damage onto those. So reasonable trades and skirmishes there from Barracks, but it's a little bit too little too late for the time being because I feel like snow's gonna start to explode in a big way soon. 
Snow is getting very, very big, hitting that 200 supply. I don't think he can charge across these bridges, no. though, necessarily, to trade this army, which he'd like to do. But he will be able to start throwing a very large bank. Um, and if Barracks pushes across right now, I think that would be just a beautiful gift for Snow. Uh, who right at this moment maxing out would love to trade armies yeah he's, he's basically just going to wait for barracks to try and push down to take this fourth base location and then start to force trades and remax out with his superior economy while also expanding in the top right bases as well and that's going to be the checkmate move if barracks can't secure this base on the left hand side and snow's just waiting for him to try and push down and take it so he can now do a little uh, 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 backstab action get these three tanks that are clumped up a storm skirt with that pullback and now he can start to try and see if he can come and shut this attack down on the left hand side now the tanks are further down on this left hand flank it does open up uh, the positions and more vectors of attack are available to snow although there is quite a sizable amount of uh, tanks in this back line here so maybe he had to get some good trades here pretty good target firing on those tanks as well shutting down the dragoons in the best line of fire so warding away any uh, hopes of snow coming into this position going to be reshuffling his tanks forward as well well and shoving more units down this left hand side to try and uh, say no to snow in any hopes of coming in here i think snow's got enough that he can come in here again in just a moment yeah there was a great snipe on the earlier shuttle but this time the shuttle's going to be able to drop all of the templar the storms are insane this is so much damage from wow. the storm just that psionic storm dealing uh with this entire army clutching out the fight the dragoons and zealots are just here for the cleanup as this fight is already basically won at this point only two tanks still remain the rallies of vultures and tanks coming up might actually barely hold now but we've just got so much production behind this and the tank count has been majority reset yeah, this is going to be a little bit hard uh, uh, not for uh, Barracks to swallow here in the sense that uh, Snow is not even really relying on his Reva harassment to win this game. It's just a nice straight up, you know, solid textbook gateway man style that's doing the job right now. And it's really slowed Barracks down. Now we've got these additional bases for Snow coming online and we still don't have any mining critically at this fourth base location and Snow's still putting on the pressure, unloading more Zelos in the front while trying to get storms off on these units. Barracks is doing everything he can to try and get this mining base up online but he's unable to do so currently in just 110 supply to Snow at 160 right now. He hasn't got enough to fight off a maxed out Protoss army anymore so Snow just keeps remaxing and throwing army at the wall and seeing what sticks. Eventually he's going to splatter all over um, Barracks' army and I don't think there's going to be enough gas in the tank for Barracks to continue this game much longer. Now with a three base advantage over Snow or over Barracks, Snow is dominating with his massive supply. Uh, breaking through is just a matter of time. Is looking for some damage over on this right hand side barracks is, and maybe looking to create a bit of a distraction for snow to deal with while this push comes across the bridges oh my goodness again with the storms here annihilating four more tanks basically for free just energy spent for tons of gas and minerals here on the terran side of things Gonna get forward and deal one last storm to these tanks. Just so much damage out of these energy units. It's uh, it's so frustrating to play as Terran in this type of circumstance. You're running out of minerals slowly but surely. Every single trade you try to take, just getting absolutely annihilated by just storm. He doesn't even have a lot of upgrades. Like he's. Barely spent money on upgrades this game. We're 1-1 one, one for yep. Barracks. He's yeah. only focused on army supply this whole game to try and get this fourth base on the line. That was his entire goal. Was just 1-1, one, one, get as many units as I can so that I can hold that fourth base. And he hasn't even been able to do that.
Yeah, he should be finishing up his plus three weapons in a normal game right now. Instead, he's just finishing up his plus two weapons in a moment here. So he's behind the curve in upgrades and still can't mine at this fourth base critically. It's a nightmare situation for him. He finally has some uh, center board control, but if he's not able to mine this fourth base, it doesn't matter. He needs to control the center of the map so he can't get stormed from the low ground and have his workers kill for free. But he can't do both. He can't secure his fourth base and keep the mid middle under control. So it's kind of like the Roman Empire stretched a little bit too thin right now saying i think he's about to crumble he's looking that way Shun. he's looking for any way back into this game he's hoping for snow to throw his army into this massive uh, army containment of mines turrets goliaths and vultures but it's not gonna happen snow is too smart for that he's not gonna just dive in and waste his army uh, into that center of the board instead coming in here and hitting the economy of barracks killing off all the scvs this was basically everything that barracks had because yeah. I mean, he's mined out in the main. He's almost mined out in the natural. GG is called. A beautiful tactical takedown by Snow. No need to do anything fancy. Doesn't take any risks with his early reaver. Doesn't deal any damage, but he gets himself into a position that just cannot be broken. Queen going to be sent out here. Final Zerg player of the night. Troy, cross map position. Snow versus Queen. What a treat, honestly. This should be a really fun and interesting matchup. Yeah, and JYJ waiting in the wings to fight the winner of this game. So I think we go, we've been kind of spoiled for choice this evening. And I love the fact that it's been a little bit back and forth. It's, it has been a little bit strange in the previous seasons where like you'd have one one or two teams get completely decimated but it has been very tempo swingy in this season and kind of hard to call and i'm all about it saying i love the the kind of dynamic we're getting here in this season with case you know it's like snow is uh trying to get the scout on as quickly as possible maybe thinking about going for a nexus first he checked center left to see if there was a overlord in that position and now he's going to check top right and he should be able to see the Overlord as it comes um, in towards yeah. that natural. I think he's going to be able to get this Nexus uh, first down, or uh, 12 Nexus down uh, for free. No, he drops a Forge. Okay, so since he wasn't able to scout here, he's got to be careful. Not going to drop that. But he could have gotten away with yeah. it here, cross map, and this later pool. And this was a 9 hatch from Queen. You don't usually see 9 hatch very often. It's very strong against Gateway first because you can basically pop out 8 lings when the Zealot is like running into your base kind of thing but not so strong against the forge opener here so but queen didn't want to deal with any kind of shenanigans uh from like having his uh hatchery being blocked and he wanted to go to hatchery first and uh yeah so a little bit of strange opening here from queen but um i don't think it will necessarily dictate the game entirely here uh, but i do feel like this is slightly snow favored going for the forge first against a nine hatch absolutely the nine hatch is great against gateway first it can be very strong against two gateway as well which is really strong on this map um and someone like best if he was playing right now might be tempted to do a build like that but i don't really remember snow ever doing two gateway in the middle of the map or at his natural yeah, I don't think he's the kind of guy to go for two gate. So, a little bit of a risk here from Queen. It's not going to pay off. And as long as he doesn't, there is eight lings on the way. So he needs to pull like at least three probes here to not just straight up die. There's only one cannon that's going to be finished up. So he needs to have a, a, f a few additional probes here to wall this off. And he's pulling that now. You need at least three to at the bare minimum. But ideally, you actually want like five. Well, he's going to go bare minimum right now. Three probes are being pulled. Oh, he's going to target this down really really quickly good blocking so far from snow but he doesn't stop in between the two cannons and he will get through into the main base a cancel on the cannon in the natural so he cancels the second cannon he may end up starting a uh, one in the main base instead but these links could do a ton of damage uh, regardless 
of that cannon yep. getting started here are not going after the probe. So far, really good control out of Snow, and he will start that cannon in the main base mineral line. It's just uh, too much potential here for damage from Queen to uh, let that stand. Oh, he loses the cannon. I think that was a cancel, actually. It was a cancel, yeah. If, if he didn't get the cancel, if he didn't get the cancel, that would have been worth, but the cancel actually makes this uh, uh, better for Snow because now there's not going to be many probes going down to those lanes, obviously. So, yeah, overall, that was a bit of a gamble by Queen. It didn't quite pay off. The, he was hoping that the cancel didn't go down on the cannon and he would have, he would have cost a lot of money uh, being wasted there. The 150 minerals going down the drain would have been great for him. Instead, he just gets a tiny bit of compensation and just a 25% on that cannon cost and not really finding the damage that he would like to there, unfortunately. But yeah, there was a bit of a risk from Snow going for the bare minimal three probes. He'd have a few additional probes on the, the mineral line, but they were too slow in getting to position. So almost uh, faced a bit of disaster there, but Queen not quite on top of his control. Yeah, Queen opening with the nine hatches made the best of a bad situation, but he hasn't noticed these zealots running across the map and Lings are way down at the bottom center. I don't even know what they're doing over here. They really need to get up uh, to this top right hand corner to start to deal with this attack. There's a second cannon coming up. I think he wanted to wait for Ling speed and then do like a Ling all in. Uh, yeah. Considering that the cannon was canceled in the uh, main and the natural. Um, yeah. But you I don't think he's going to make it happen. Yeah, the probes are here as well. Oh man, this is a complete shutdown. Uh. Oh, man, this is yeah, this is a complete uh, whack down right now. I think he got one probe there, but that was it. Is getting the zealots around up here, which is which is something to show for it, to be fair. But it's not enough compensation, and with the second cannon already made in the natural as well, these further lings are even less likely to to do their job in any finding any damage here. So it's a really rough situation from Queen. Um, he's not like out of the game by any metric. He is actually making some decent amounts of drones to come up here in mine, and the hatchery is still alive at the third base. So he has avoided disaster here, but it's definitely a strong edge to snow going forward yeah snow's so on top of everything man he knew that there was lings on the map that queen wasn't showing and that they were probably going to show up at his no. natural there to try and make a run by he handled it perfectly the second cannon and the pro pull i mean how do you beat someone who's this good mechanically and also like theory wise he knows exactly what you're doing before you even do it right. crazy i mean that, that's basically uh, textbook why flash is so good or was right. so good and he is looking a little bit like the protoss flash as of late he's not as consistent as flash was but he's getting to that level slowly but surely and he's looking pretty scary it was once upon a time where he was only good in pvt and he was a little bit lackluster in pvz but the last year or so he's really stepped up his pvz game as well and he's starting to look like that well-rounded scary phenomenon of a player much like uh, flash basically had that title not too long ago and it's not really anyone that can replace flash and snow has been the only player that's really kind of indicated that maybe that's a possibility with another player Ooh, so close so <laughs> it feels, far. feels like snow is toying with him right there he's like easily could have run away to the safety of the cannons but he's like running back and forth and uh, make it look like maybe the Scourge could engage with the Corsairs here. He sees the second starport. That is huge. The scout, getting okay. that scout, is actually super worth it right there for Queen. Yeah. Um, Snow is not playing a normal game, and it's really important that Queen knows that. Yeah, now we can invest in making a spore at, um, at least our third base here, maybe even our natural as well. And having a spore at both bases will, you know, mitigate a lot of the threat from this double Stargate play really coming to, to fruition so having that scout off is critical here for queen we'll keep his options alive and prevent him from taking yeah he's gonna be going for that double spore option just to make sure he doesn't take crazy amounts of damage to this huge flood of corsairs and with the zealots soaking up the hydra shots while the corsairs are ravaging your overlords as well you do need a little bit of extra to to help uh, buffer against that and i think this is the wise choice from queen yeah, you're also gonna need to put out a few extra hydras than you would regularly right here 
Yeah. Uh, timing for the defense is going to come quite a bit earlier. The attack is going to come quite a bit earlier. So you have to get a larger number of Hydras out than you regularly would at this timing. Sacrifice some drone production to make sure that you don't take too much damage. And then you're going to have a much better a mid and late game. But here we go. That big Corsair number making its way over here to the natural right where all the overlords are stacked. But... He sees the defensive si situation, the setup on the side of Queen and decides he doesn't want any of it. Yeah, and Queen shut down the uh, simulators at 12 o'clock, so Snow can't get in there to make his third base like he wants to. Tries to come here into that natural expansion, does find a couple of Overlord kills. Not quite the critical amount he wants. There's the kind of, there's the money shot right there, almost popping that entire pack, just all but one with low HP remaining. And that's a big supply block for Queen to overcome at a critical stage in this game. Can't quite produce any workers or units for quite some time and that's a lot of mineral invested into nothing but overlords for now and yeah this is looking pretty dire for him he hasn't got a lot of overlords up here in the top right to worry about going down to these corsairs but the only thing going for him is that snow's gonna have to take this island expansion as his third which does slow down his curve a little bit my god dude everything was going right for queen he saw the double stargate play he made the hydras he made the spore and he still lost all those overlords smh dude this is just pro classic protoss is able to find yeah. that damage even though everything has been done properly queen i feel for him man he is gonna have a hard time here getting his drones going and uh, popping out enough hydras to deal with the follow-up and snow can do basically whatever he wants he's already dropped a probe on the low ground to take this third and now i mean killing the the assimilators at 12 is great but if he's got drop does it even matter i mean it actually helps snow now doesn't it yeah it does oh! force you to go oh my gosh this shuttle though oh, oh. Well, what, what's going on what's going on what's why going did he on? let it land <laughs> i don't understand that i think queen misclicked or something you only sent one scourge out of four to go on that shuttle there's a definitely a misclick or something by queen uncharacteristically does shut down that dark template maybe it was an intentional mistake he wants him to land the dts because he wants to kick it i don't know that makes no sense, no sense. though <laughs> you might just, like, why would you do that but, yeah i sense. think it's just, a misclick. I think it's just a pure misclick there from queen i think it might have been that he yeah maybe he like shift clicked out one uh scourge but then missed click the second you know and sent the rest no. of the scourge back to go and deal with the corsairs but uh that's the only thing i can think of a little bit funny but it doesn't end up resulting in any uh extra damage on the side of queen uh he's still got a great force of hydras out on the map the ground army of snow is nothing that queen can't contend with right now he can absolutely handle it so snow kind of has to play this game of keep away right now where he's going to be flying yeah. around dropping probes and building bases uh, all around the map and you know expanding like crazy while trying to make sure that queen can't do something like a big mutilist switch or uh, get a drop into any of his bases with this big pack of corsairs roaming the map yeah, and, and this course says, even though it was a big initial investment from uh, Snow here, they will eventually pay dividends as they keep killing more and more overlords and scourge over time. There's a lot of lava and that, and gas that's being bled off from Queen as well as time progresses. So these Corsairs are finding more and more value as the, the game progresses as well. And these overlords do have to be very careful with their positioning because while, while distracted uh, elsewhere on the map, we may see another flood of overlords just go down and that could be uh, disastrous for Queen as well so these these corsairs are going to be a really big impactful active threat on the map for snow while he takes these expansions pretty safely i'm pretty surprised that we're taking this space down in the bottom left uh, i thought we would be taking more uh, island bases for snow i think he's going to drop more probes around the map yeah he's going to drop one here in the center left He'll probably come down and drop one in the bottom left as well and just take those nexuses yeah. but what is Queen going to come out with here? He's got the Hive on the way. Um, is he going to go into some sort of weird air army? Or are we going to see drops come through? Because drops can get shut down really, really hard. And he yeah. needs some something to deal with these islands all around the map. 
Well, I think he realizes that nothing is going to happen until he gets uh, Defile Attack. Mm. I think he knows that if he does need to drop these bases, he needs Defile a support to even make it cost efficient. So we're, we're not going to see anything happen until that Defiler comes out. He's just going to make triple Evo, tech all the way up to Defilers, and then start to try and do some tactical plays. If, just Plague alone will help him come out onto the map and give him some map control. But like you say, he needs drops to actually get shit done. So unfortunately, he's going to have to rely on exceptionally... Um, high level control to even get any kind of cost efficiency going and it does seem very prowess favored when you're in this sort of like refugee style and you've got bases all over the map and templars and cannons at every base it does seem very prowess sided so i'm not sure if that's going to go uh, very well for queen but i do think it's his best bet once you have this much money as the Protoss player and you're able to just drop a probe and build five cannons with one probe it uh it starts to get pretty ridiculous uh, Lee one sided yeah. for the Protoss player. Um, I'm not liking that Snow is keeping his skirt or his Corsairs spread and losing them. He should be having them all together and just constantly cleaning up Corsairs like this. But uh, losing these is, is pretty painful. Um, if he loses all the, the Corsairs, then the drop becomes so strong. Here comes yeah. a massive army from Queen at now 154 supply. He can definitely start to take fights out on the map, but can he break any bases? And more importantly, can he break any island bases? Well, I think killing some of that Corsair fleet is going to be like the, one of the critical things he needs to amount a comeback. I mean, uh, Snow definitely doesn't want to have to replace those right now. He wants to max out on a very strong Templar goon Zella army. He doesn't want to have to replace uh, any of that supply or gas with those Corsairs. So that does open him up to being dropped, like you say, and also prevents uh, any overlords from being sniped later on. That will prevent any kind of wing condition from just being caught off a guard from being able to produce units or what have you. So yeah, this is so far so good for Queen. It's, he's looking like he's able to navigate himself into a much more playable game state at the very least and we'll start to try and take some more additional bases I imagine in the coming moments of the game but I, I do feel like I really favor um, Snow's position it's going to be so hard to get drops rolling in a cost efficient way to challenge him unless you can get a really good fight in the center of the map and gobble up most of the Protoss army beforehand I think we're going to see Snow build Reavers everywhere. He's going to start building Reavers yeah. at each one of these outposts. At 10 cannons at each base, 2 Reavers at each base, and what are you even going to do with that? Um, drop coming through here, but it's just barely out of range of what Snow can see. There it is. He sees it. He sees it. 6 overlords are making their way over here can he actually kill any of these before they connect with the uh drop well he drops a storm on top of this kills one of the overlords before it unloads but the rest of the overlords are going to get uh, unloaded and the cannons will fall very very quickly so everything going to go down this base is likely to fall um a great first drop here from Queen. I did not expect it with the number yeah. of Corsairs he had earlier, but he makes it work. Yeah, this is a great first blood here for Queen to get some damage on the board and prevent Snow from just growing completely out of control. Keeps him in check just barely. He is taking 9 o'clock as well, but shutting down some of the Protoss' mining is, is going to be huge, especially as the, the main is now just becoming mined out. The natural will soon be to follow in a few minutes here, so it does kind of keep Snow in check a little bit, but Archons are starting to be mixed into this army, so Zealot, Templar, Archon, Goon, and Reavers. It's going to be really tough to find any cost efficiency here. We're going to have to rely on play quite a lot here for um queen coming forward but i feel like he's had enough time to grow he's now maxed out i feel like he can finally start to challenge snow out on the field at this critical moment and this could be the turning of the battle here do we have plague there it is plague goes down but it's on the zealots that are already fighting so he could end up uh taking this fight well he does back away okay so the zealots will take all that damage sometimes it's the case where you have the uh, zealots they get plagued and then they come in and get their damage anyway before the plague actually takes effect because it does take some time to deal uh the actual damage of plague now flying into the little pocket base here the island of queen he blocks that base he stops that base from going down and so queen is starting to mine out a little bit he's had a yeah. very high count of drones in his main and natural for a very long time and he just barely finally got this base online at nine o'clock he has another base uh, all fairness to him he has another base 
over at the top right, that island, but he hasn't saturated it yet. Doesn't have a Nidus over there. Um, and so, yeah, he is going to start to mine out pretty soon here. However, he's coming across the map with a really significant army. Defilers, Dark Swarm. Can Snow stop him before he gets up this high ground? I think he should have Reavers by now. We haven't seen it just yet, but Reavers should be on the cards uh, at this point. With Reaver on high ground, I don't think that Queen can break this. Yeah, it's going to be really tough, that's for sure. But so so far, he is growing just barely quick enough to stay in this game. Is still maxed out with the 3 o'clock and the top right island coming along. If he can just saturate that and get those bases churning away, he's going to be looking okay. And tactically, he's doing pretty good. I mean, he's not really finding any bad trades so far. This this attack in the bottom left could go pretty bad for him if with some good storms. But so far, Snow hasn't reacted with a great storm. So there's one or two good storms there. But Plague going down on those cannons as well to soften out that position. It's very hard to come in here and actually get the, the job done. But he might just barely have enough left over after the storms to clear up this base. And that would be huge for him. But so far, it's looking like it's just barely not enough. It's so difficult to find those cost-efficient trades. And with shuttles out on the map, Snow can kind of just very his units around to set up these defensive pockets again to prevent um, Queen coming in there and finishing off the job. Ah, very nice plague on all these shuttles. They will fall incredibly fast now if we can just get some hydras underneath them. Reavers are coming out, but they're just walking into some lurkers at the front of the natural and looked like this one's going to die. That was probably the most... Uh, or the least worthwhile reaver that snow's ever produced that's crazy yeah. that thing died incredibly fast it didn't even make a scarab i think it ends up going down uh, lurkers still trying to press into this position but that's way too many archons way too many storms this is all going to get cleaned up really cost efficiently for snow yeah, this is the rough thing to deal with as uh, because you do have to sacrifice a lot of your armies just to have a chance at breaking open these positions. But if you sacrifice your army and don't break open the position, you're just behind. So now we see the follow-up attack trying to make the best out of a bad situation to try and overrun this position finally, but not quite able to find that critical damage necessary to do so. There is some additional lurkers coming down. The Dark Swarm will remain for a little bit longer here. Maybe you can come in there and break open these cannons, but now the Dark Swarm has finally dissipated. It is going to be able to just just barely maybe kill these cannons no not even finally able to break open the whole position does kill the cannons but still not able to clear up the rest of the units there are more and more rallied units coming in here comes some shuttles as well ferrying over more units for snow it's a very tight hold here for snow if you can just get a few more additional units and prevent this base from going down there's also some zealots you can keep shuttling over from the other side of the, the gas wall as well and with reaver support here i feel like this threat is really finally dealt with plague there it is big plague there Getting on top of those Reavers. He will hold the base. But this has put a lot of pressure onto Snow. And it's given Queen some time to establish further bases. He still... Wait. He still hasn't mined in top right. What are we yeah. looking at? Okay, finally getting some workers over there. Uh, very slow on that, though. And uh, again, he's mining out. We're 21 minutes in. That means the main and natural both have no gas. And they're going to mine out of minerals really, really soon. The third is also going to be getting low. So, I mean, he's going to be strapped for cash very, very soon. He needs to get in on some of these bases of snow while expanding at the same time. He can't just be throwing everything at the wall, not killing the bases, and then not expanding on his own. He has to keep growing here. Yeah, not only that, but he has to make sure that he doesn't allow the map to become divided in half because he needs to stay ahead on bases at all times just to be even with snow. So he will eventually have to secure both 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock from snow to stay pretty uh, cost efficient on the trades. It's going to be a little bit rough to secure both of those things. There's only six mineral fields at those bases as well, so it's not a huge influx of minerals even if he does secure them. It's going to be tough for him to uh, keep this war of attrition going. Right now he's maxed out, but it's tough to find good trades again against this army of Protoss, which has such high amounts of splash damage. A big gambit of a drop in the bottom left, though, could be the ticket to come out of this position. But Snow is ready with the High Templars to throw down some storms and some Reaver support here. It's going to be tough to clean up this base in the bottom left, but he's going to try and attempt it anyway. The Reavers are the linchpin of the defense right here. Ooh, the probes are really, really stacked. They're all being pulled to that gas geyser. But he manages to keep them alive. The 
Uh, Lurker went down before dealing that final blow and the probes are now able to stand in front and blo body block for the cannons, keeping them alive. One more storm is necessary to deal with this uh, last Lurker here. 3-3 three, three is done on all of these uh, Hydras and Lurkers pushing up towards the natural. Getting actually bust through this position. That's so many units, but the storms are annihilating massive chunks of Zerg. He is going to be able to break this position, but I mean, can he get into the main base and actually clear that up? Snowed really doesn't have much here to actually stop this. What happened to his production? He's actually got a huge army on the other side of the map. Looks like he's going to try and attack maybe center right while this is all going yeah. down and just abandon the main base. Well, Queen Wisely knows that the, the Protoss Natural is usually the least defended position in the late game scenario. So it's usually actually a weirdly good place to attack, even if it's mined out, because they won't have enough defenses there to protect their infrastructure. So we're going to get on top of the gateway production, the top left. Meanwhile, though, going to be losing some of these bases to the whack a mole attempts off snow. He does have quite a few of these bases set up in the Yarding expansions, but a little poor man's recall coming into this third base location in the bottom right. There's a Hydra here and two Sunkens to help try and mitigate that, but enough Archons have been dropped to completely dismantle this defensive setup. So we'll be getting the kill on this uh, expansion here as well. So two bases going down on Queen's side of things while having his infrastructure ripped out in Snow's main. This is looking very Snow favored at this point. Oh, we do have a few Scourge here trying to get rid of those shuttles. That would be massive if he could get rid of those uh, transportation units would allow Queen to stabilize a little bit quicker because Snow has kind of a marooned force down at the bottom right. I was surprised that he didn't pick that up and drop it into the main base because that main is not well defended. He could pick off a lot of production structures. Instead, he's picked up another group of units. He's brought them over here to try and deal with this base over at the uh, top right. He's actually going to get a bunch of kills on some of these drones, but... In the end, it looks like Queen will hold on to that location and one of the last mining bases. I mean, it's still going to be alive here for now. The main is completely gone for snow, though. Yeah, I think Snow has enough gas in the tank to make this work. He has a, quite a lot of gateways sprouting up in the bottom left as well. So he still has a lot of production going, but not quite able to spend all his money as he would like to with his main base going down so efficiently. Queen has quite a large army, but is unable to field it right now. He needs to rely on overlords getting them over these uh, um, little uh, hiccups in the geometry of the map. So without a huge mass amount of overlords up here, it'd be a little bit difficult and annoying for him to clean up these skirmish units without taking losses from Snow. I feel like overall Queen has a chance of winning this game, honestly, but only because like he killed so much of Snow's infrastructure that it does give a little bit of a breathing window for him to get some of his bases set up again, but he isn't currently mining a lot. Has got a great Aspire as well, so we're going to see Guardians coming down. It's going to be a great tactical play here from Queen. There's not a lot of anti-air besides Storm available to Snow, and if there's not enough Storm and he spreads out these Guardians, they could become a little bit frustrating to deal with. Yeah, there is an opportunity here. I mean, the Corsairs are all gone and all the Stargates are dead. They all died in the main base. There's no chance of remaking that air army. So maybe this Gambit by Queen could pay off. The, the thing is, it is a real Gambit. He spent a lot of his money, uh, the bank that he's built up, to get all these Guardians out. And if they don't do well and he's not able to secure more bases, then he could just dry out and die out in this game going forward sniping some guardians i love this move with the guardians bringing them all together and just trying to one shot uh, the templar before they can even get their damage well, I, th I think we're seeing the start of a huge, crazy queen comeback in this game, saying, like, I feel like hit that critical damage done into the, the main base, like, killing off that much infrastructure and starting to stabilize with these bases, I feel like he just maybe has done it. And this tactical play with the Guardians and the inability to really do anything to counter this besides rely on good storms, I feel like, yeah, there's a lot of life in this game for Queen. All he needs to do is snipe these shuttles, and I would definitely agree with you the comeback is real um the shuttles still flying around right now is a huge threat but since they've been plagued a f just a few hydras getting under them is going to end them so quickly and then the mobility of snow will be completely negated that's so much moving through the middle of the map right now and this is a very well defended base it's the really one of the only mining bases of for queen he's got center right and top right that island and that is it 
Wow, a lot of Archons moving through the middle of the map, dropping a ton of Templar and... Oh, he loses one of the shuttles. That's a big kill for Queen. I think there was like at least two Templar inside that. One Corsair remains, but it's not going to be able to deal much damage against all of these Guardians, especially with plus one armor. I, th I hope that Corsair can overclock his neutron flare damage or something. He's going to be tickling all those Guardians slowly, but surely they do have natural armor, so it does take a long time to kill those. And I feel like he's got some uh, a lot of life in this game, does Queen. I feel like killing this base up here in the top is going to be huge for him as well. Snow's only got these three bases churning away, and there's not a lot of saturation left on these as well. Eventually, they'll start to become mined out, and if he's not able to secure bases and trade well, some beautiful storms do come down onto this main a Zerg force here. It's a very uh, soft uh, glass cannon style army. So if some good storms and positioning, Snow can overcome it. But right now, it's looking like Snow has pretty much only um, utility in his army with the, sh the splash damage of these storms, Reavers, and Archons going for him. One tiny misstep, all it, all it will take for him to lose this game. And I feel like so far, Queen has done an absolutely phenomenal job of coming back. Queen is going to move the Guardians over towards the center left. Pressure that base while fighting here in the middle of the map with this army he loses the reaver that is a key pickup for queen it's gonna allow his uh, mostly hydra lurker ling army to trade much much better against the archon zealot high templar fighting force of snow snow bringing forward more reavers though his spirit animal can he make it work against Queen, who's now harassing this base and shutting down one of the few mining locations of snow? This is a big fight in the middle of the map. Huge storms getting thrown down everywhere in the backdrop. A lot of probes going down for snow right now. He's got to pull, I think, the Templar together, bring them over here to start storming down these units. But he's really regretting not building more... Uh, Stargates at this point as well as, you know, cleaning out these super pesky, annoying guardians is uh, taking a, up a lot of his attention and time. Yeah, even just making one single scout would clean these up so fast with the antimatter missiles. Um, but unfortunately, he's going to have to just deal with this slowly but surely. Getting a little bit of his money shut down. He has got a lot in the bank, does Snow, so... Uh, as long as he doesn't lose this army inefficiently, he should be okay. But the problem is, is that even after a lot of those storms have dried up, he's a massive flood of Zergs out on the map. So he needs to be tentative with his army and not get caught out of position. He might get a few of these units swallowed up while out of position. Just try and reinforce them with some Shadows and Reavers, but probably realize that he had to pick up and evacuate. Yeah, he's going to get all that whole army just gobbled up there. Nice little pickup for Queen, who's currently ahead in supply, 160 to 140. Looking pretty Queen-sided for the time being. Does have a few of these bases popping up as well. Has hasn't yet saturated them, but Queen's looking like he's got more life in this game than uh, Snow does. Snow really needs to take another base. I think the island just outside of the bottom left would be a, a decent enough position to take. But it's going to be hard to hold that position with so many Guardians and such a huge potential for drops to come through on those bases. Uh, and no real anti-air to speak of for... Snow, so, aside from just storms and Archon shots, like, what else can he use to stop a big drop from coming in and just laying waste to that base? Uh, and if he puts all of his forces over there on that location to make sure that it doesn't get killed, uh, what are the chances that his natural here in the bottom left doesn't just die? He needs to wait a little yeah. bit longer until that mines out before taking all the forces out of that position. Well, I don't think Queen wants to lay siege to any of these bases. I think he just wants to prevent um, Snow from expanding while trying to saturate his expansion. So I feel like he's just going to soft contain Snow and try and do something about 6 o'clock when that finally uh, tries to go online for Snow. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to, to challenge that too much, though. I'm wondering how that's going to go. I feel like he's going to try and um, set up some drop to come into 6 o'clock or this island expansion he's been monitoring snow closely on when he's trying to take these bases and snow hasn't yet tried to take them until just this moment now so we may see some drop play coming out of queen in a few moments i don't see any overlord setting up for a drop just yet but it looks like queen wants to take the old expansion of snow just below his original main base in the top left hand corner 
This could come down to the last mineral patches on the map. That's how close this game is right now. Still 5k in the bank for Snow, so he's in no threat of running out of minerals for quite some time. He's just going to be setting up more and more mining locations. Increasing his unit flow, his mineral flow, and that gas is quite low. Such a teched out army here from Snow. So yeah. many Templar in this uh, force. It's kind of the inverse of what you usually see in these late game si uh, situations with uh, Protoss versus Zerg. You usually see a ton of gas banked up and very little minerals. Uh, and then very like really really late game then all the gas gets spent on a, like a massive flow of templar but snow has been relentless in just building crazy amounts amounts of templar all game and so he has a massive mineral bank and he's going to be able to continue to build or to, to mine gas for a really long time of course forever yeah. uh, potentially right I like how he's been really, yeah, focusing more on his utility more than anything, rather than just, like, wasting zealots and what have you. But I also feel like he's missed out on a trick of not getting Dark Archons, because I feel like Dark Archons with feedback would be great in these situations, and trying to snipe the Defilers before the plagues get activated, and I feel like that'd give him just a little bit higher uh, cost efficiency rating to really uh, put the pressure on Queen, but instead he's, like, I think he's just trying to, like, you know, I don't think he likes that style. You don't see a lot of Protoss players rely on Dark Archons, but it's becoming a new flavor in the meta to do it but if you're not comfortable in doing it in the early game i feel like a lot of these players don't utilize the feedback in the late game in these scenarios and that could be a, a bit of uh, to their discredit because I, I feel like feedback is one of the few ways of staying relevant against plagues yeah absolutely feedback so powerful in these late game situations it's a, a shame that he's not pulling it out here but there has been so much craziness it's hard to remember everything um, that can be that is potentially possible in a map that's just this insane in a match that's just gone this haywire remembering that oh yeah dark archons are a thing that just <laughs> it might go by the wayside you might completely forget there that that's even possible to do something like that but um, maybe we'll see it if this game continues to go on even later i i imagine we could be in for like a 50 minute game here shun it's possible it's possible yeah i mean it, it, the, the efficiency is kind of going very stalemate right now which means both sides will probably not want to press the issue in attacking so that also might mean that queen won't want to challenge these expansions that slowly be, get set up by snow instead queen will just saturate his existing expansions and just try and skirmish with plagues and what have you and yeah that could that could see a, a game being dragged out into a, a, whole, a whole hour here potentially if, as the map becomes slowly mined out and neither player wants to commit too heavily. Do see a quite a sizable force of Lings trying to get some efficiency here and if he can whittle down the count of Archons enough we might see a bit of a commitment from Queen to try and get on top of some of these units and force some big trades. So far it's going pretty snow favored and these Reavers haven't gone down on the left flank critically so this is looking a lot more snow favored as time goes on. I feel like Queen's overstepped his bounds just a little bit. I, I feel like you need to be a lot more cautious just in how you engage the Protoss army. Oof, 23 kills on this Reaver. I bet there's, yes, some, well. there's some Archons in there with some disgusting numbers of kills <laughs> as well. But Guardians are going to come in and try to break 6 o'clock. See what they can do. Nice snipe on that shuttle. Really critical getting rid of those transportation units, especially when we're not relying on any air aside from the shuttle in this game. We're going to have maybe one or two more storms remaining. But the spread so far has been really, really good from now, Queen. Now, okay, he's actually killing so much with these Storms and Dragons. It's kind of wild. I, I, I want to point out to people, it's actually generally cost inefficient to go for Guardians because it's very hard to split them and spread them out perfectly. And over time, you can kill them for free if you consider that energy regen. So you have to be very tactical in how you utilize the Guardians to get like any kind of like good return on the value of that. But there are some windows where it gives you enough of a tempo swing and map control to make them still relevant, even if you're 
trading cost inefficiently gas wise with them so i do like how queens utilize them this game without relying on them too heavily because it does put him back a bit in the cost efficiency rating but it does give him some small tactical edges to utilize like now he's got this six o'clock pocket more under control harder for snow to expand here and he is still being active out on the map and hunting down some of snow's efforts and i feel like maybe queen could still win this game shutting down some of these shells as they're unloading it's going to be key he's still getting even more shuttle kills here and that's going to make it much harder for snow to traverse around the map with his army and any kind of slowdown right now is going to be key in keeping control of this game 6k minerals in the bank though i don't think he's afraid of making some more shuttles um it is gonna slow him down of course um but more shuttles are going to come out very, very soon. More zealots are going to be made, and more drops like this uh, can occur from the side of snow. It's like a small army here. Getting surrounded. Great trade with the storm, of course, and the archon being an absolute hero, almost taking out every single ling there. But the lings will win the day. Another drop. Could be coming down here towards this bottom center. Another great target would be top left for queen. If uh, Snow can get on top of that, the money is really low right now for Queen. I mean, 148 yeah. supply, but he's just barely getting an income right now. So he needs to get some more bases online. And if Snow just shuts down a couple more of these bases, oh, this is a great move. Coming in with Mutas, 11 Mutas here, shredding a couple of uh, Reavers. Some people in my games will, uh, <laughs> in my in my chat when I'm playing on stream, will uh, suggest this to me. Why don't you just build some Mutas and go snipe stuff? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not very efficient most of the time, but in this case, pretty well done here by Queen. Yeah, if you've got the APM to have 300 APM and the you know the attention span to keep up doing that kind of level micro while you're macroing and firing in all cylinders, then yeah, we'll, we'll power to you. It's just very difficult for most people to pull off those kinds of things. Sometimes it, it can definitely be the, the thing that you need to tip the edge against Protoss players. It's very difficult for them to min-max everywhere and dot all their I's, cross all their T's at every junction in the game. And it uh, looks like he's finally going to make a gambit uh, coming down to the 6 o'clock position, but there's a hefty amount of uh, Lurker Guardian here to make this a little bit tricky for snow to come in here and some scourge also going to be running up here to try and take away some of the ferry potential by sniping those shells only two shells remaining so can only get a handful of units across that time eventually though he will come in here and break up his like queen coming from behind with those mutas and trying to get some more critical snipes on these high templars pretty good you can jive in so far and coming back in here to get around big beautiful pickup on these high templars to save most of them from those shuttles but snow still losing a few of those high templars to those mutas regardless oh there's some Great storms coming out here by Snow. Good dodges by Queen as well. The Archon's just not able to hit those uh, Mutas at all. Really good dodging here from Queen. Wow. Just completely negate those. And he will get some more mining online over in top left. And with that mining coming in, I mean, he could absolutely win this game. It's gone back and forth several times, I feel. But, I mean, Queen is... He's in this, man. He's, he's hanging on. Yeah. Yeah, he's hanging on. He just needs to get more drones mining. He has got some of these bases set up, but he hasn't got any drones mining at them. If you look at this, like, top left third base on the island location, it's got only a couple of drones mining over there. It's really rough how low economy Queen is right now. And Snow's got this huge bank, but he doesn't want to risk leveraging it because he'll just get bled out in the war of attrition here. So it's a real neighbor nail bite of a game. Uh, good uh, pickoff from these Guardians, though, sniping some of these high Templars, being really annoying as possible and slowing Snow down at every junction when he gives a little bit of a wind window to him but now finally we see snow committing to the six o'clock base there is a few guardians here that come up here and challenge his position if they're too clumped though they will go down very quickly to the sonic storms so good splitting is needed Ooh, some great splitting by queen look at how he's pulling back all of these guardians but accidentally bringing a few of them too close together getting some good cost efficient trades with these templar another group of mutas is coming in here is this going to be for the snipes he is going to come in try to get some snipes on this before the templar pick off every single guardian here and break this position there's like one lurker left two guardians and just a few mutas here diving on top of all of these 
Templar, as long as he keeps some of these guardians alive, he should be able to push everything back, but that's a lot of zealots. Oh my god, the Archon just barely finished up in time. It's only got a few hit points left remaining on it, though about 100 in total. Needs to be careful not to get shaved off by the Micro Queen. Being very adamant is Muir Control. Sonic Shockwave, though, does do so much damage to that clump of Muirs, so without good control, those Muirs will bite the dust. Needs to be careful not to lose those inefficiently. Big fleet of shells is available now to Snow to come and finally secure this base. We'll have to wait for the creep to dissipate at the very least, but... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is just enough for Queen to come into this game. He is going to get some good storms down on these, uh, these mutants here to soften these up. But yeah, I don't know. He's, he will get this expansion online, I feel. But at what cost? The Queen may have just barely stabilized enough. He's got these bases mining again. And uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's hard to say for, sh for certain. Queen does need to still fight for this base, though. He can't just let Snow have this base for free. Yeah, this is almost a perfect map split at this point, right? We've even had uh, yeah. Snow mine from that base in the top left for quite some time. And now, you know, Queen's mining off of it a little bit. That's the only advantage he's going to have if he allows Snow to take this 6 o'clock. That is it, man. I, it's, that, that is the only advantage he's got. And I don't think he's taking good enough trades to win this game after all that uh, all of that trading um, well he's he's not he's not aware of the the bank of snow right he can't no. know for certain that snow's got this 5k bank as for all he knows it's the same game state but without this like 5k bank of snow yeah so he might feel like he's in a much more even spot than he is which right. he, which is going to be unfortunate for him going forward well, Snow is going to come up and maybe get a storm drop going on these drones. They don't have any vision of the high ground. There are Scourge available, but he just has no idea. And he's going to eat a huge amount of damage. Oh, that's so painful. We've only got 25 minerals in the bank. <laughs> How are we going to make yeah, these drones? He, he only just got those bases saturated as well, so they've not even been mining for very long. So now he's just had that economy completely reset again. Big skirmish with these Guardians trying to get something done at the 6 o'clock base. Only one Dragoon here relying purely on Storm. Few Lings coming in here as well to, to do something, I guess. But the main thing is this, oh. this Guardian skirmish. And I think Snow's just about done it because he's got more and more units ferried over with these shuttles to secure this 6 o'clock location. Storm will always win on paper against um, Guardians because you just can't trade out efficiently enough. Even with perfect splitting, eventually the Templars will trade more efficiently than you. It's just so difficult. But you do have these small windows of advantage you can exploit. So let's see if Queen can get something done here with these dropping of units while the Guardians are raining down. Yeah, the Guardians are just the preamble to the uh, eventual drop that's going to come through. He's managed to get these unloaded on top of all the Zealots and he actually looks to be breaking through. He just needs to get on top of these shuttles, man. If he just built a few Scourge and stood in between the two bases and blocked the shuttles from coming here to uh, keep on reinforcing this position, I really feel like Queen could have broken this base. But look, he just keeps bringing more stuff over and over again. And yeah. Queen is not stopping them from doing it. There's no Corsairs or anything here wow. that could stop him. But you know what? He can't what? spend these minerals. The Guardians. He's not got enough gas income. He's only, he, all of his gases are depleted right now, so he's only getting 75 gas um, uh, per, per minute from these geysers, so he can't really spot by the right units to do the job. He's got a few goons coming in here to try and snipe. A few of the Guardians going down, some beautiful phase disruption snipes from these dragoons. Does snipe four of the Guardians, tries to get the remaining two. It's a beautiful play from Snow to come near the Guardians to try and clean up this while he can. There's more units from Queen coming in to try and secure his location, though this Nexus might still fall regardless. He has killed the majority of those Guardians, but yeah, Snow's having a little bit of a hard time spending these resources effectively because he's not got enough gas income right now he's only got about 225 gas a minute to spend oh my god he's gonna try and dive on top of this base as well queen not happy with just defeating uh snow in the six o'clock and taking that base for himself he wants to attack in and gg is called wow, wow. snow taps Absolutely out insane. oh my goodness what a Crazy. game incredible fantastic fantastic game there between these two that is more than I ever could have expected. You know, at the beginning of the cast, I said, this is going to be yeah. an awesome game. This is a, a real treat to witness, man. That was more than a treat. That was a dessert. That was a full belly of a beautiful StarCraft play. Love to see it. We're going to be jumping into our last game here after a short break. My goodness, what a game.
Queen versus uh, Snow. Wow. I feel like we just went to the gym. <laughs> I'm almost going to miss Troy after watching that. <laughs> That's like... I almost don't mind that being in the, the pool if we get yeah. games like that. <laughs> like what we've been saying, like, yeah, it's not the most balanced of maps, but you can't deny the entertainment value of games like that on it. I mean, come on, guys. That's just... You don't get that on, on many maps. Oh, that was... That was incredible. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. One of a kind game. That's going in my 2024 best games fol folder for sure. Excuse me. We're jumping now into this game with Queen versus... JYJ, our final match of the night comes down to Terran versus Zerg once again. Yeah, and they've been fighting each other for that the the you know the top spot on those point rankings. Zerg like, has been on that upward trajectory, but Terran you know not far behind in terms of like most recent weeks. They've been grinding out the points and trying to maintain their lead. Now we could really see the fight start to become alive between these two forces and who's going to get that final seed, more importantly. We might see a Terran versus Proto semi-finals for the first time in a while. Just the uh, first uh, five weeks have been uh, played so far. So still plenty of play left here, plenty more weeks left in this season. Um, we just finished casting the uh, BSL race challenge series, and they actually have 10 weeks. Did you know that? I, I think... Um, pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have 10 weeks, which is pretty awesome. And then two revives in the finals and semifinals, which uh, I feel like is a pretty cool adaptation. Um, makes the, the series a lot longer, though. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't think they, they planned on it being only four players on each side. They were planning on it being up to six as well. So we were kind of lucky that it was more KCM style with just the four players on either side rather than a crazy six. I don't know what that would have been like. Six players and two revives? That could have been crazy. Yeah, that would have been a long day of casting. But as it was, it was a very satisfying finals. Looking forward yeah. to a nice uh, semis and finals this season as well as all players and all races firing uh, in these weeks so far. Even though, you know, Protoss isn't taking home as many points this season as they did last season, I think they're putting up some great games regardless. Absolutely. And I feel like we're always going to have StarCraft around. As we see these new games like Battle Aces and what have you come out, they're going to be much more arcadey and focusing on the unit control and tactical elements of the games. And you're not going to have this kind of raw, real-time strategy element like StarCraft come through in many games, I don't think. So I feel like StarCraft's always going to have a place as this sort of like retro RTS that we're all going to know and love. Absolutely. And what you were talking about earlier about as people get older... Uh, we expected yeah. that they would become worse and worse at StarCraft, but it just hasn't been the case. It's, I think, down to that, like, people were thinking that the uh, reaction time factor was going to become, was going to be, like, more of an issue in Brood yeah. War, which it just didn't turn out to be. Um, games like Battle Aces and those other uh, newer RTS, even StarCraft 2, far more reliant on reaction speed. Um, than this game, and I, I think that gives it a lot of longevity as well. At least it gives the players a lot of longevity. Nice snipe there. One Ling making it in the main and gets an SCV. One that's... Ling to rule them all, say, and how crazy is that? Like, you don't see that in... I have to say, that's like a one in a thousand that that happens. Usually you see almost zero damage done by a single... If anything, even like two Lings getting into the main base, you, you generally speaking wouldn't see much being done with that. So really impressive from Queen to get so much done with so little in both of these uh, most recent games. I'm really impressed by Queen as of late. Like, he, there was a little bit of a phase where I feel like he kind of dropped her out of relevancy and wasn't really showing up when he was playing in a KCM and other events. But as of late, he has been showing a lot more spunk, Sam, I have to say. Absolutely. We were... Uh, he was kind of the butt of every joke for a little while after right. losing out in the ASL qualifier to a no-name player. People were really rating him low, and he was playing to suit that moniker as well, you know? People weren't respecting him, and it was with good reason. Oh, this medic! But as you said, he's looking a lot more sharp. Yeah. Taking I'm happy games. to see it as well. Yeah, and, and uh, it, yeah, showing up in KCM. 
I mean, this is the zero that I know and love, and uh, I, I've always supported this guy way back in the day when he was using the moniker zero. And he used to be a very low economy style of player, very strong with his mutilus micro. And in more modern times, he actually kind of revolutionized Zerg versus Protoss. There was a time where he was seriously dominant and just dominating everyone. And for like about you know a year window, he was looking like one of the star players. And then more in recent times, he has dropped off a lot. But now we're seeing that 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 zero that we 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 want loved and most recently kind of you know revamped the Zerg versus Protoss uh, approach to the game so I'm, I'm happy to see it we've got the first mutilist harassment coming in it's not going to target the natural as JYJ might have expected he's delayed his turrets in the main base and all oh, back at home Queen has three sunkins coming online so he's prepared for the counter attack and he's dealing a lot of damage here with his main force so this is working out beautifully for Queen yeah. JYJ is struggling to put anything together right now he's not even going to be able to save this main base he's just heading out on the map with his bio but where is he going to go there's no place to attack into he comes back he turns around and comes back with his bio now. He's got a fight. This is game-ending damage already that's yeah. been done to JYJ. Absolutely wild. Yeah, he, he understood that JYJ would prioritize the natural turrets because of the spawn positions. Usually the, the Zerg will hit the natural first, or at the very least take a few extra precious seconds and getting into the main base. And Queen was banking on that and comes in and does so much damage in the main base. Still, this damage is being done. More and more Marines are falling with some pretty good Mutalus Micro. He does get a bit of damage on this exit onto those pack of Mutas. But like you say, there was already game-ending damage. Queen actually ahead in supply, 50 to 43 right now. He can basically do anything he wants. He can go to three hatch all in mutas from this you can just do a normal standard game and set up a lurk contain maybe while we'll continue with the mutual mutalist harassment which means that there'll be no map control for jyj and the lurk contain will go down for free and you have to wait for bezels to even come out here onto the map either way this is going to probably go queen's favor still seven mutas alive in this pack to come in here and snipe more and more of these scvs turrets still yet to be finished up saying Oh, he's found such a nice little pocket here as well to abuse these SCVs. Eventually, he will be trapped in the back here and going to lose a few of these mutas. Uh, we'll have to fly out through the turrets as well. But he's just done so much damage. And the longer he hangs out back here and just harasses the heck out of JYJ, the longer he's going to have to make this next transition or whatever he wants to do. He's got the third gas coming up online here in the bottom left hand corner bottom right hand corner no hydralis den just yet it's looking like an all-in mute to play yeah yeah it's looking like that the amount of drones that were made as well are pretty indicative of a, a three hatch all-in mute to this and the fact that he's like prioritizing these turrets right here right now with just a small amount of mutas does very heavily indicate that he wants to finish the game with a mutilus play jyj is going to see if he can just like you know bluff out this game by just sending out units across the map hopefully he'll be able to fall a turnaround on these muters but i don't think that um queen's gonna to die to this he's making a fourth sunken to make sure that these three sunkens don't get overrun you can either make an evolution chamber out in front of these sunken colonies to hold on as well but jyj is gonna gamble on breaking the sunken line here now let's see if this gamble pays off jyj is setting up at the natural he has all the marines here he's stimming up and going for it a lot of mutas are coming back from the front line. JYJ's base is no longer under attack, but he's got no workers left to speak of. He's breaking through here at the natural, killing off the sunken colonies, but I think there's just too many mutas. He's able to fight here with this final sunken colony and the 12 mutas to finish off the remainder of the Marines. And GG is called Queen takes this one home. Ooh, a great way to finish. Gotta be feeling good after taking home that really, really long, drawn-out ZVP. He, with a couple of quick moves in the early game, snaps the back of JYJ and takes the crown. Well played by Queen. Definitely looking like his old self here. Yeah, absolutely. An absolutely epic night of StarCraft Remastered. It's just fantastic the games that we've had tonight um just so many bangers honestly so many great yeah. great games and i mean definitely at least two different contenders for uh, best of 2024 yeah it was kind of wild to see queen's tactical usage of guardians come out in such like 
cost efficiency there on Troy. It's so hard to execute. His understanding of that matchup is almost unparalleled. It's just his execution that's been lacking as of late. But now he's kind of showing that formidable former self that he once had. And it's lovely to see Zero under the new matriarchal mantle of Queen still showing that he's got a lot of life left in him. And now we see Zerg finally tying up on the point six all with the Terran squad and still on that upward trajectory to infinity and beyond soon. Awesome to see another Zerg victory here, but for some reason, guys, the, the stars have aligned. I don't know what to say. If you guys have stuck around to this point, I think you deserve a little bit more Brood War. I don't know what the special occasion is or why it's happening, but we've got a ZVZ to end tonight. It's going to be Jadong versus Queen. Again, Ooh. no idea why. There's a game here at the end of this week of KCM, but we're going to go ahead and cast it. Let's jump right in. Well, here we are, Shun, in the final game are. of the night. Um, <laughs> the final, final game of the night, I guess. Yeah, sure, talk, about sure. subverting, talk about subverting expectations, Sam. <laughs> this is kind of interesting. I like it. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what exactly has gone on here, whether a challenge was issued by Jadong or Queen or... Uh, something else behind the scenes occurred maybe uh, there was a, a giveaway or something from the sponsor who knows yeah. what's going on here but we're happy to have another game to enjoy and a mirror matchup no less something that we never cast here in kcm well, I think maybe, I mean, obviously I'm just speculating here, but maybe, you know, Queen was dominating Terran and Protoss and he just wants to get the hat trick. He wants to get the, the Zerg domination. And who better to challenge than Jadong himself, the, the Jadong versus Zerg master? Yeah, Jadong. It's very well known for being an incredible ZVZ player. Both players going wow. for an equivalent build. That's crazy. 12 hatch on either side? Do you ever play 12 crazy. hatch in this matchup? I'm not a big fan of it. I, I, no, almost never. No, I, I'm like, I'm the kind of guy that goes like over pool, then I get gas, then I'll like, then I'll, 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 I'll scout the middle of the map with one circling, see if you're going nine pool. If you're going nine pool, I'll take um, link speed and make links, or if you're not going nine pool, then I'll make a, a drone in a second hatchery and do like a six meter one base timing. I'm not a guy to go 12 hatch very often in ZVZ. This is wild that both players have chosen to go 12 hatch on the two player map, no less. Neo Dark Origin, a double 12 hatch is kind of crazy. Handshake agreement, perhaps, between these two players. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but you could just immediately die to a nine pool speed um, yeah. easily even with the 11 hatch it's still like a very close shave but 12 hatch you're just dead there's no way yeah. so i mean maybe that handshake agreement happened maybe not maybe they're just both on the same page here it's hard to believe though like you said on a two-player map why would both players do this other well, it's than, a very rock yeah. Paper, yeah it's a rock paper scissor thing but here's the thing is that if you assume that your opponent will play to counter uh, a fast pool build they'll do something like an over pool or 12 pool right then then you then you feel more happy about going for 12 hatch and both players maybe had the exact same reasoning here like it's so unlikely for me to go 12 hatch so it's probably advantageous to do so and it's, it's led to this and um this is going to be such an interesting game because like there's going to be no craziness for the first like three to four minutes of the game and in a zvz that's really rare to happen we see a very fast layer out of jadong he's going to be making it sunken as well to like buffer against this trying to get a drone advantage here a tech and drone advantage and rely on the sunken and get some surface area advantage going for him and able to use these drones in their natural experience expansion to help in the fight if needed to well he'll definitely need to fight with the drones here he skimped very hard on overall ling production and queen could get a huge advantage if he gets in kills a couple of drones or deals any damage well he's just gonna turn around seeing that there's enough lings i am so shocked that we're getting away with this much greed for Jadon. It's very well calculated greed from Jadon. He know, because of the 12 hatch timing, it's very hard for Queen to abuse him. If it was 11 hatch though, maybe the pool timing would be just barely fast enough that these lings could have maybe done something here. But yeah, I think as it stands, this is this is going great for Jadon. It's a small little early advantage for him. And this uh, Sunken will also um, be valuable in deterring Queen from going for any gambits of making a few additional links to try and 
punish Jadong as well. So Jadong's going to feel pretty safe and comfortable going forward in this game. It's going to come down to pure control as we see the Mutalisks and Scourge being made. And I'm curious to see if Jadong's going to try and leverage his uh, gas advantage by making more Scourge, or if he's going to very tentatively slowly push out more and more Mutas as time goes on. There's a di different in style choices. There's the Scourge and Muta choice. It, it can go either way. He does have a pretty sizable gas advantage, though, so he might want to get a big tempo swing with initial Scourge or try and get an, a little more uh, long longevity of an advantage by making Muas. But it seems like a big gambit from Queen is being uh, revealed to Jadon. This Overlord is going to spot all these Zerglings moving out here. Mm, this is crazy. He's just going to go for a big Ling Swell right before Jadon was about to start making Mutas. And Jadon is actually saving his Larva right now. The Evolution Chamber is going to buy so much time here. It is an, a fantastic addition to this defense. But I really... Wow. I don't like him not building any extra Lings right now. However, it seems like it's going to pay off. He's killed almost all the Lings. No way. This has gone so bad. This has gone so bad for Queen. I mean, this is this is crazy. I'm happy to see it. He almost could get this one drone. Just barely doesn't get it, though. One hit remaining on that drone, unfortunately. If he was a little bit more on top with his uh, target firing, he maybe would have killed that drone. But no compensation for that assault whatsoever. And now going to be fighting the deficit. He's already behind in gas. Now he's going to be getting a little bit of a supply stuck as well. Really frustrating for Queen. I mean, he used so many larvae to build all of those lings how does he have enough right now to build any mutas he somehow managed to scrape a few together but he's gonna have to deal with lings and mutas coming into both bases he can't really even afford to build mutas at this point he can only really build no. scourge and just a few scattered mutas a little bit at a time uh, with no drones mining minerals at the natural it's really all you can go for and being forced to build an overlord right now that's even less mutas that he can make you'll have to make masses of scourge now gonna take this at fight pretty good connections there with the scourge hitting a couple of these mutas of jadong jadong still chasing though and with this many scourge on his side how are you ever gonna take this fight queen is losing a lot here and it looks like jadong's gonna be able to overwhelm and chase down the last final muta there it is it goes down gg Nice. Jadong is crazy, man. There it is. Lee Jadong. Great way to end this week of KCM with a rarely seen mirror matchup. Vanishingly rare, in fact, as we almost yeah. never have mirror matchups in this tournament, but it was a fun match to watch and a nice and quick way to end this beautiful series this beautiful week week number five of season two 2024 guys thank you so much for watching we've enjoyed this cast and we'll see you in the next one thanks guys